Welcome again to Rogers TV and a special presentation of the 2011 OHL Championship Final between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. This on the 10 year anniversary of Owen Sound's first ever Ontario Hockey League Championship. My name is Manny Pava, thrilled to be joined by Mark McKelvey as we bring you all seven games of the OHL final. Tonight, we bring you game four of the OHL final, a pivotal game in this series, Mark, after Owen Sound stunned Mississauga in overtime in game three. An incredible game three, just a thriller. 6-5, they say that's the, the best score in hockey if you want to talk about what will be a classic hockey matchup. And that was the case in game number three, a game that saw Owen Sound get up to the lead. They had a 5-3 lead going into the third period. Mississauga able to tie it. Some questionable uh, calls along the way and maybe even a questionable tying goal. But it was tied going to overtime, and Matt Petgrave got his opportunity to be the hero as he came down the wing over the blue line and let a big slap shot go, and that gave Owen Sound their first win in the series. Swung momentum a little bit to their side. Now, here we are, game number four, and Owen Sound knows that they have got to take care of business as they come back home to the Bay Shore. Michael Zador made 32 saves in game three to get the victory. Some people were a little bit surprised that Zador got the start in game three, but when called upon, even though in a 6-5 game, you don't really talk about goaltenders, but when called upon, he was able to make some key saves to get Owen Sound the victory. He certainly stepped up, and so too did the big guns for the Owen Sound attack in game number three, obviously knowing that they had to make sure that they were going to get on the board in this series. And as I mentioned, Matt Petgrave, maybe a little bit of an unlikely hero, it was his fourth goal of the playoffs, but you go through the scoring in that game number three, and it was Andrew Shaw that kickstarted it, Robbie McNardi adding another one to his great postseason, Garrett Wilson, Shaw again, and Halmo. I mean, Owen Sound, again, we talked a lot about it, Manny, the last time we were talking here as we were setting up game number two, the fact that Mississauga had such a deep roster, well, now it was Owen Sound's depth that was on full display. You're right. Andrew Shaw had the two goals, as you mentioned, but everyone, every other goal scorer was a different player on the Owen Sound Attack roster. Devontae smith Pelly had two goals for Mississauga in that game, but I have to think that Mississauga may be a little bit overconfident for game three. They had a 2 nothing lead, just one game two in Owen Sound, heading back to home ice. I wonder if they thought that this might have been a cakewalk, and that certainly wasn't the case in, in game three. From a Mississauga standpoint, the majors had to be reeling a little bit. Yeah, you'd have to think so. They were going to come back with a big push here in game number four because, to your point, they were in full control. They didn't want to let that slip away. And for Owen Sound, I think this was a team that I don't want to say was embarrassed in game number two on home ice, but it wasn't their best effort. And uh, they were going to look to change that here in game number four. And uh, it's funny how it goes, man. Hockey is a wild game from one game to another. A lot of people talk about momentum, and there's a lot that believe out there that momentum really isn't a thing from one game to another. Well, we went from a 6-5 game to what is going to be quite the hard-fought battle here in game number four. Quite an exciting game, too. Even though you had all the goals, game three was exciting. I thought game four was just as exciting. And it was obvious the message from Dave Cameron, the head coach of the majors, and Mark Reitz, the head coach of the Owen Sound Attack, was to clamp down a little bit and play a little bit more defensive hockey. That is certainly what we saw in game number four at the Bayshore. As we present game four, as part of this special presentation of the 2011 OHL Championship Series on Rogers TV. A prospect of the San Jose Sharks. He is 19-year-old J.P. Anderson. And for a second consecutive game, he was the winner in the overtime triumph on Friday in Mississauga. It is 20-year-old Michael Zador, a matter of fact, the Tampa Bay draft pick, celebrating birthday number 20 today referees are sean reed and scott ferguson the linesman jesse wilmot and matt traub a veteran crew for game number four a pivotal affair and we 
are underway. 6-5 in overtime, the count on Friday to get Owen Sound back in this best of seven series. Zador handles on top of him immediately as Sezikis. That looked like it went off a of post. Chugging opportunity and he stopped by Zador on the short side as Wilson taps it ahead for the speedy Cameron Brakes, who's been a nice addition to this top trio with Hishin and Garrett Wilson. It really brings great speed. Wilson, a quick shot, just missed the stick of Joey Hishin, the first round pick of the Colorado Avalanche. Devontae Smith Kelly already with 11 goals in the postseason, four in this series. Jesse Blacker clears it in. Calmo to it in the corner, bumped by Brett Fleming. And Premarosa takes over. Nice take in the skates by Shagul, slide it in and look to head off as Greg Such makes his first appearance in this series. Number 24, a fifth round pick of the Buffalo Sabres. Cramorosa spun around by Andrew Shaw. And here's Petgrave, the overtime hero from Friday, crunched by Mark Canton. And Petgrave felt that. Cramorosa with great speed got around Petgrave. Shemich came over to cut him off at the pass. An electric beginning to game number four, a minute and a half in. Helmo enters the zone, leaves it for Shaw. His drive got all of it. And Anderson with a good arm glove type stop. Well, Dave Cameron really loves his team to come out with a good physical presence to start the game. Mark Canton provides that as Petgrave comes across the line. Canton has him lined up perfectly and delivers a message to his counterpart, number 22, with a big hit to open the fray here in period number one. The crowd is juiced. Both teams are juiced. And if the first minute and 40 is any indication, we should be in for a good afternoon. Ivy McNarty. The center for Owen Sound on this line that features Helis and Maidens. McNarty leads the Ontario Hockey League playoffs in goals with 13. And he's riding an eight-game point scoring streak. Where's number 10? Riley breaks with Chris Souza, the 20-year-old veteran. In behind the net. Knocked off the puck by Keevan Cutting, his flick fan. Flick has at least one point in every game in this series. And he's a truculent type. Gilbert carries on, blocked by Percy. Another try by Gilbert. Upended and gets back to his feet of the game's first penalty of the game is going to Owen Sound. Anderson's still in the net. He hasn't had a chance to leave yet. Now he will. And Flick will turn back to look to set things up. D'Souza, one touch to Sezikis. Casey Sezikis. Off the skate of Fleming, who will track it down, but Stanish stops the play. Peter, so dangerous when a player gets within that two to three foot range of the board. And here's what happened. Lower left part of your screen. Watch Brace. He has got his back to the play. Now, Helis comes in and gives him a cross check. It wasn't a, a huge push, but again, it's in that dangerous situation for, to an unsuspecting player who's not looking at all. It's a check from behind for Helis and not the kind of discipline that Mark Reeves is looking for from his hockey club. Power plays have been huge in this series. Mississauga is 8 for 18 through the first three games, operating at 44% even better in the last two games where they're seven for 15. Hishin throws a huge hit on Suzekis. Suzekis stopped by Zidor, who made that look rather routine coming across the crease. Well, Casey Suzekis and Joey Hishin have been matched up against one another all series long, and it's been extremely frustrating for Hishin. He has had the inability to produce. He's a minus four in the series so far. And here off the draw, those two go head to head again. Couple of cross checks to Sezikis. What you don't see is Sezikis responding. So a little later in the fray, once Hishin is able to get up after those cross checks and a trip, he would get right back after Sezikis delivering a crushing blow in front of the Majors bench. And now we're going to see some of that after the whistle stuff result in some penalties. Hishin making his way to the box. 
Devontae smith Pelly making his way to the box for the majors. Keys to the game are brought to you by Irwin Tools, makers of Groove Lock Vice Grip pliers. A simple push of a button to just jaws two times faster. Visit Irwin.com for more. When we speak to the aforementioned players, Case Steady, Casey Sezik is great in games one and two. He led the way. The rest of Mississauga followed after his lead. For the Owen Sound attack and Mark Reed's on time. Joey Hishon, Garrett Wilson. It's time for those two guys to step up and be counted for in this series as Owen Sound's best players throughout the course of the season. They just have not produced here in this series. A combined minus nine and just three points between those two players. That's not good enough. Hishon in the penalty box along with Devontae smith Pelly and Dave Cameron having some pretty adamant words right now with one of the two referees, Sean Reed. And now Reed comes over to chat with Mark Reeds. Well, I think it's only fair in that situation that if you're going to give an explanation to one coach that the other coach should also receive the benefit of being able to speak to the official to get an explanation for his side of what has happened here. And that's what we're seeing from Sean Reed. Good job by the veteran official. Plenty of Mississauga fans in attendance. Tickets very hard to come by in this town. Never before has this Owen Sound junior team been in the league final? Anderson was knocked down by Shaw. There'll be another Owen Sound penalty. Shug to Maxon Kitson. A low wrister off. Blacker goes wide. Shaw throws a shoulder into Sizikis. And somewhat like game two, an early two-man advantage for Mississauga. Well, we talked about Andrew Shaw off the top of the broadcast, how he must play that fine line between being physical and being able to produce. And here he simply gets tied up with Stuart Percy and J.P. Anderson. I mean, he's going for the puck there, and it's Percy who actually bumps his goaltender down thanks to the urging from Shaw. But I don't know. That's just pretty good compete level in going for the puck there. The fans in the building, I think, agree with you. Two-man advantage now for 102. Stuart Percy to Justin Shug. Kenton to drive, and Zidore found it through a screen to turn it aside. Kenton to Percy. Shug. Percy a drive, had some room, but shut a walk. Kenton again. He'll blast a high drive that didn't miss by much, and then the puck. Stopped up on top of the net. Mississauga right away uh, using their good power play prowess, which to this point in the series operating at over 40%, getting plenty of shots on goal here early on in that five on three. And that's what I like to see, Peter. When you get in a five on three situation, you have to show the same sort of urgency as if you're in a five on four situation. The same rules apply. Be simple, get the puck to the net. And we've seen that from Mississauga here early on. 44.4% for Mississauga here in the finals after a pretty good power play in the first three rounds that operated at over 23. Mississauga was excellent as well in the regular season, sixth in the league. An important faceoff win as Jesse Blacker rifled it down the ice. 25 to go in the two man advantage. Fleck backhands it in deep out there with Jordan Mayer, one of the game two heroes. And Maxim Kitson. And the fans thought Kitson should have been penalized. Mayer. He'll ring it. Off the side of the net. Stanish a chance to clear and fails to do so. Fleming to Kitson. First penalty has expired as Helis races back out onto the surface. Flick works off the boards. His wrister off the crossbar. Flick whistled it. Terrazio, the one-time Owen Sound attack first rounder. Mayer through the seam. That shot and Zidore continues to be very sharp here in the early going. You know, Peter, we talked to Mark Reeds before the game, and because Mississauga's power play has been so successful, they've had to tweak it. Now, Terry Vutri, the assistant coach, looks after it, and you'll notice Owen Sound here, really aggressive in the first three games, but here, a lot more patient, a lot more laid back, and a lot more discipline in that four-man box, trying to make Mississauga attack as opposed to the attack being on the attack while on the kill. Penn fronted by the shooter, no lane. Percy, a kick save by Zidore, and again, 
the inability to clear when you have a chance. Ten in Shug Skates. He scored two in this building in a victory in game two. Canton tipped in front. Percy moves up into the slot area of the defenseman. And Owen Sound is successfully killed off an early two-man disadvantage. Pressure still in their zone. Canton for Jordan Mayer. To the left point and Percy who mishandles it. And Owen Sound should draw on some confidence from that. Very important penalty kill. Oh, and the building is surely proud of that. A pretty loud and raucous Harry Lumley Bayshore Arena. Long outlet to Halmo with Berdnikov and Andrew Shaw. Halmo's wrister. Locked away by J.P. Anderson. Shaw up front with Berdnikov. Shaw backhander. Anderson his first big save and a rebound. And here's Such in transition. Break Such skating well. He's pulled down another Owen Sound penalty upcoming. For a third time, Owen Sound shorthanded. Greg Such inserted into the lineup for Dave Cameron, hoping to add a little speed and a little physical presence. And that speed pays off here as he uses that outside speed to go down the wing. He's tripped up on the play. And for that, Stephen Cutting goes to the box. And once again, the Majors go back onto the power play. Third consecutive time. In period number one, Sezikis comes back out with Smith, Pelly, and Shug. Percy and Catton. Stanis protects it against the boards with help. Wilson backhands it and makes no mistake. A lot more simplicity in the kill for Owen Sound so far that as soon as you get it, although they've had a couple of poor clearing attempts, the idea is there. Hey, get the puck, fire it down the ice, let's just waste some time. And Mark Reed's first choice for his forwards up front are also his two best offensive players. Wilson and Hishin on the ice right now. And this might be the type of situation where one of those guys comes to the fore and they start to break out and really produce here for Mark Reed. Zador shovels it to Stanish. Stanish wrists it off the clock. Very low roof here and score clock. When we look at this top line for Dave Cameron, Devontae Smith, Belly, Casey Sezikis, and Justin Shug, five games in the regular season and the playoffs now, and they have combined for 13 goals against the Owen Sound attack. Now, they're not going to see time out here in this particular portion of the power play, but beware, those three guys are lurking and have had great success against Owen Sound. All NHL drafted players like Maxim Keatson, a six-round pick of the LA Kings. He moves to the slot area. Mayor Durazio, one touch for Brett Fleming. He fans on a pass, and Blacker sends in the distance. Michael Durazio came over to Mississauga from London at the deadline. His shoot-in. Gilbert, another deadline acquisition. Wires it off the high glass. Fleming to Kitson. Kitson to Rob Flick. Flick tried to return the favor. Cut off at the pass by Gilbert. And cleared once again, this time courtesy of Robbie McNardi, who hustles to the Owen Sound bench for a change. You know, all these penalties early on really kind of uh, rattle both benches because you can't use the four lines of depth that both of these teams possess. D'Souza first to the shoot-in. Kitson moves to the middle patiently, but maybe too much so. And another killed penalty for Owen Sound. And puck knocked down by a high stick as he into it a little bit. With Kitson. Well, Peter, let's talk a little bit about this power play. We'll look at the Owen Sound attack here. And they use that tight man box. And that's something that they weren't utilizing before. We can roll it now, and you'll see that they're going to force Mississauga to come to them. This box extends out a little bit, but for the most point, it remains that tight four-man box. And the puck's turned over right here. Owen Sound with a very simple clear down the ice. A huge adjustment made on the penalty kill by Mark Reeds and Terry Virtue. And it's worked successfully so far. It's probably been put to work a lot more than he wanted to, but it's worked. Mississauga 0 for 3 on the power play. Five on five hockey for the first time in a while. David Parente, his shot off the stick of Helis. 
Felix, 20-year-old veteran, collides with Mika Partman, and Partman paid a bit of a price, but quick to get to his feet. Helis steals it from him, enters the zone, Liam Helis, steered to the corner by Anderson. Helis, another battle won, and Puck turns over to Partman, who will skate it out of the zone. Good back pressure by McNardi, who you really have to be impressed with. Uh, he's been awesome all playoffs long for the own sound attack. In the first couple of games in the series, he was great. A little bit quiet in game three, but uh, I think he has been as consistent a player as Mark Reeds has had here in the postseason. Wise tussles with Petgrave. Jamie Wise, part of that energy line for Dave Cameron's majors. Fleming in deep from his right point position. Fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals into the corner. Cramarosa from a very sharp angle. And Petgrave clears it off Percy and out to center. Cramarosa into the zone with speed. Dipsy doodles. For dealing with Keevan Cutting. Such protects the puck with his big frame. Cramarosa in the corner against Hishin. And Wise. Cutting and Wise knocked Wise down, but Wise still able to keep the puck and play alive. Wise for such. Cutting intercepts and off the skate. The puck out of the zone to Wilson. And Sezikis takes his time and space away. Hishin has to wait. He hit Brace with it, but they allow the play to continue. Nearing the 11-minute mark of this first period of Game 4 of the Rogers OHL Championship Series. Mississauga with a two games to one lead. Garrett Wilson, 19 points in the playoffs. Side of the net, Burdnikov jammed it. Smith Pelly, he'll shoot it in. Not as deep as he would have liked. And Stanish with an excellent outlet to Shaw, leading a three on two. Burdnikov, he shot Anderson to save. Now Fleming will take a penalty. And Owen Sound, unless there's more infractions after the whistle, will enjoy their first power play of the afternoon. Owen oh, Sound has spent much of this first period killing penalties, but here Garrett Wilson helps lead an attack. It goes to the front of that Burdenikoff with the backhand, sends it out in front, and a loose puck in front is just sent wide. And at the end of the play, Peter, after this follow here by Anderson, a couple of penalties result. Burdenikoff with his shot. You can see Fleming take his man Shaw down, and then after the play, left side of your screen, Devontae smith Pelly and Mike Halmo get into it. So those two guys will go to the box as well, but it'll be Fleming's as the difference maker, and Owen Sound now gets a chance to go with the extra man. Owen Sound's power play has been good through the first three games of this series. They're five out of 16. This is their first crack. Stanish, Blacker, Hishin, Wilson, and McNarty up front. Can't with a good step up for the Majors. Good pass. Wilson, McNarty to the front. Draw by Anderson. Blacker. He scored in game two on the power play. Stanish, that takes a bite out of Suzekas. And you know he's not concerned about paying the price. Stanish dishes off to Joey Hishin. Matt Stanish returns it as they play catch. Blacker tipped in front. Clear to the boards by Shug. Shug, an aggressive play, unable to move it out of the zone. McNarty, a pass, receives it back. And Hishin, a backhand try that was broken up. Blacker into the slot to McNarty, hooked up just enough. Stanish, Blacker one-timer. That looked like it hit Wilson. Hishin with room, dancing in back, hands and wide. Seemed to be a little unsure of what he wanted to do with it. Hishin fabulous through the seam, and Wilson fanned on it, and the majors able to relieve the pressure. Jeffrey Shemich. Draft pick of the Tampa Bay Lightning to Jared Maidens. Burdnikoff 
Had a little room, but Maiden's unable to deliver the pass. Matt Petrie had eight points in his last four postseason games. Andrew Shaw wheels in. Nearly banked it off Anderson, who was really deep in his net. The penalty is over. Fleming out of the box like he was ready to make somebody pay the price. And Anderson hangs on at the side of the net. A couple of good chances for Owen Sound on this power play. Mississauga loading up the neutral zone with three guys, but able to split that seam and get that pass ahead. Now, uh, an odd man situation occurs. A partial breakaway off a good pass from Wilson. And McNardi unable to get it by J.P. Anderson. Then Wilson again with a no-look pass. Hishon's got all kinds of time in front of the net. Doesn't really get a good shot off. And when he does, it sails wide. So J.P. Anderson, a lot of traffic around him with Owen Sound finally getting an opportunity to work in the power play shots at seven apiece. Anderson, the leader stats-wise, really from day one, Sam, of the season. Yeah, he has been fantastic all season long, Peter. And what he has the ability to do is rebound from a subpar game. Game three was not a typical J.P. Anderson game. He gave up five goals. He's back to a strong start here in game four. As the goals against in the playoffs of less than two and a 9.21 save percentage, he was signed coming out of a prospects tournament in Penticton by the San Jose Sharks in the fall. Yeah, he's played in every game here in the playoffs with his 14 wins and sub two goals against, despite giving up six in the last affair. McNardi off his skate wide, Partnan ahead to Kitson, and here's Mayer. Mayer's had an excellent series. He'll let it go, and it's picked out by Zador. Both goalies looking like they're ready to answer the bell here today. Kitson Parente swings it in a hurry to Fleming. Fleming is shot, and Zador got a piece of that, too. Petgrave can't quite cut it off in the cycle. This is where Mississauga really likes to make their hay. Yeah, cycle, wear down the fender, and if you can't do that, draw a penalty. Helis knocked down by Corrente and it turns into an offside and a big hit as Corrente looks at the official like. Well, Peter, Mark Reeves has had the luxury of three goaltenders, but it's also uh, a bit of a detriment in that you have to keep all of these guys happy. Zadora makes uh, his sixth appearance here in the postseason. We've seen Stager make 12 appearances, Jordan Pennington make five. Pennington was the backup to Zadora in last game, but it's Scott Stager who is backing up Michael Zador in this game. And Peter, it's so important to have your goaltenders playing at the top of the game to have one another challenge one another. But it wasn't a clear-cut decision for Mark Reeds to come back with Zador in this game, although he did pick up the first win in the series for Owen Sound. So we'll just see how that goaltending carousel continues, not just here in the Ontario Hockey League Championship, but in the MasterCard Memorial Cup as well. And Bennington, a highly touted prospect for the upcoming National Hockey League draft and performed more than ad admirably in January in the top prospects game. Right, but when you look at Michael Zador, he's 3-0 and here in the playoffs. He's got a couple of relief appearances, and the thing is, sometimes you just have to stick with the guy that's winning you games. It may not always be pretty. The numbers may not all bear out where he is the best guy, but 32 saves in game three, and what did he do? One thing he had to do, he won the game. Zador was the starting goaltender for Canada in 2009 at the World Under-18 Championships in Fargo. Palmo from a sharp angle, kicked out by Anderson, and here's Flick. Long shot, juggled, and then covered. And as has been the case really since early in game two, pushing and shoving and jostling after every whistle. Yeah, and a lot of that has resulted in penalties. And you have to wonder, Peter, that when penalties are called in that situation, do players think, oh, wait, I'm going to go into the scrum and draw a penalty? Or do they simply just go into the scrum thinking, well, let whatever happens, happens? So on this occasion, no penalties called. Everyone breaks up, clean and square. They head back to the benches, and we continue on. Teams make changes with 5.03 to go. And the top lines continue to be matched as Sezikis a quality opportunity off the faceoff. Sezikis was brilliant in the first two games, especially game one when he notched a goal and added two assists. 
He's working on a four-game point-scoring streak. The fourth-round pick of the New York Islanders, Casey Sezikis. Stanish delivers it to Cameron Brace, and he'll shoot it in. Anderson took a look at Wilson, went the other way. Percy, good outlet. Shug carries on. A two-time Memorial Cup champion to Devontae Smith. Kelly backhander from close range. Sezikis into the slot area, tipped away and clear. That's what I've noticed in the last two games with Owen Sound. They're making the simpler plays. Especially from the back end, and that's what you have to do against a high-pressure team like Mississauga. And there are a lot of times where you have to get rid of that pressure by making that simple play off the boards, even ice it once in a while. That wasn't the case in games one or two. Especially here in the 6-2 loss in game two on Thursday. McNarty off the cycle. Finds Jeffrey Shemich. Petgrave banks it off the end boards. They're very lively here, and that turned in to an opportunity. Here's one at the other end. Wise, such wise a shot, a terrific shot blocked by Matthew Petgrave. Petrave has a lot of tools. Still really learning the defensive side of the game at this level. Shemich settles things down. And he'll reverse it neatly to Petgrave. Shemich up the middle on the stick of Jared Maidens. And now Robbie McNarty will slide it in and head off on a change. Late stages of period one, and this has been one of the better periods of the whole series. Yeah, it's had a lot of pace, Peter. A lot of pace, a lot of end-to-end -end action, good chances on either side. Some excellent goaltending as well. Kitson creating some havoc. Crunched by two players, but stays with it. And the back official will make a penalty call for roughing. And it's going to go to the Russian-born Maxim Kitson. Well, Kitson is so big and strong, Peter, that he's able to draw so much attention. And here he goes into the corner, and he'll deliver that extra blow that sends the Owen Sound player Shaw to the ice. Matt Petgrave, the hero, uh, in game number three with the overtime winner, makes a smart play, banking it off the lively end boards here, and then he gets back defensively. Excellent shot block. Last second gets in front of the wide shot. Petgrave's game really coming of age here as Kitson goes to the box, and once again, Owen Sound gets a chance for the extra man. Sixth round pick to the LA Kings in the penalty box. And a second straight power play for Owen Sound after they killed off three consecutive Mississauga power plays, including a lengthy two-man advantage. D'Souza in deep on the penalty kill. He's been an excellent add for Dave Cameron's team. He does a lot of different things, Peter. Sometimes when he, he can be relied on to score, but he'll give you great PK minutes, and he gives you that depth in the five-on-five five even man situation. With only this many elite level teams left, you can't have enough for that big D word. Yeah. Blacker runs into Riley Brace and Cramarosa shoots it down the ice. Yeah, Cramarosa has really given Dave Cameron some really solid minutes here on the penalty kill. He's got a good reach, he skates extremely well, and he's active. Hishin. Wheels in with his fabulous skating ability. Tess Sanderson. Very close at the line and cleared by the Majors. The Majors killing penalties in the postseason at a clip of 86.1%. Petgrave takes a whack from Shug. Shug had a peek at Sezikis and Palmo on the back check stopped him before shooting it off the stick. Shaw in the corner, loses it to Canton, and he'll lead a shorthanded run to Casey Sezikis, the captain. He'll shoot at Sidor, takes away the net, and hangs on for his 11th stop to this opening frame. Dave Cameron won a little better commitment from his hockey club on the penalty kill, and he gets it here in the uh, neutral zone. A great job here denying entry. It starts with Justin Shug on the back pressure and from there the puck is turned over by Petgrave. That's an easy exit out of the zone for Mississauga but really challenging Owen Sound at the line here. 21 seconds left. Sezikis 
enjoying a terrific postseason with 15 points and six in his last four. Fleming, cross corner shoot in. And D'Souza working diligently with time winding down in the penalty. Fleck back hands it. Petgrave cut it off. And the penalty to Kitson is expired. So the penalty killers have been excellent on both sides. Fleck stopped up at the line momentarily before clearing it deep. Petgrave, an outlet for Jared Maidens. Fourth overall pick in last year's Ontario Hockey League priority draft. Flick off the glass and out. Riley brace now. Time winding down. And after a 6-5 game in game three, no goals through 20 minutes in game number four. Yeah, both teams really tightening up. Both teams uh, playing well on the penalty kill, and that's the result. With all those penalties in the first period, no goals, good special teams side in terms of the kill for both teams. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the On Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our On Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make rotary projects a reality. It's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the Owen Sound Attack shocked the junior hockey world by winning the Ontario Hockey League Championship. But get ready to relive that moment on Rogers TV. Join me, Manny Pava, as I host a special edition of Attack Wrap with members of that 2011 championship team. It will air after the rebroadcast of all seven games of the 2011 OHL Final from May 9th to 15th. Gentlemen, we can work together. This world is not yet ready. I can feel it happening. We don't want more violence. Welcome to the afterlife. Congratulations, gentlemen. I'm Barb, and this is Star. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives. We change lives. Welcome back to a special presentation of the 2011 OHL Championship Series on Rogers TV. This is game number four, and we're in the first intermission between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. My name's Manny Pava, along with Mark McKelvey. And Mark, no goals in that first period. The first period in this series where there wasn't any scoring, yet there were plenty of opportunities in that first period. Certainly were. You saw there was uh, several special teams opportunities going to both sides. And a 10-9 with the shots on goal in that first period in favor of Mississauga. This would be a trend throughout the entire game, though, of how close the shots on goal would be. For Owen Sound, you have to wonder, after putting up six in game number three, I mean, Mississauga also put up five, but for Owen Sound coming back home, clearly they knew Mississauga was going to clamp down on the defensive side of things. Owen Sound doing their part as well. And this was a, a very tense matchup. And I think you'll see as this game goes along inside the base where you could feel the tension continuing to grow. It was a 4 p.m. start on a Sunday afternoon. A little unusual from what uh, I'd say everyone was used to. But these two teams came in clearly with game plans. And uh, neither team was trying to stray away. It was going to be more of a case of who would make the first mistake. Yeah, Mississauga coming into game four, having lost game three, but still holding on to a 2-1 series lead. J.P. Anderson standing tall, Michael Zador standing tall for Owen Sound in that first period. But you mentioned how tense it was in the building. I think that was one thing that 
everyone could feel in that building. The OHL commissioner, Dave Branch, was in the Bay Shore for game number four as well. And not only was it tense on the ice, it was tense in the building. Nine minor penalties called. I wonder if that played a factor, Mark, in the teams not allowing to get into a flow five on five. Yeah, I think you could say that. That uh, was definitely a factor. And uh, I think if you notice, as you've been following along with this championship series, we're now up to game number four. There's a lot of penalties being called in this final series. And I, I talked about it back in game number two, the fact that this would become a factor. I know there was lots of comments made off the ice, uh, both coaches uh, chiming in at times. But this was a little different than maybe what we're used to nowadays. Uh, so special teams, we knew was going to be a huge factor. And for Owen Sound, considering uh, how the penalty kill had performed up to this point, uh, there was certainly an emphasis on the attack, making sure that they took care of business when they went down a man. Game number four, period number two, coming up next. Will the parade to the penalty box continue? Who would score first? Do you remember? This is part of the 2011 OHL Championship Series, a special presentation from Rogers TV honoring the 10-year anniversary of Owen Sands' first ever OHL Championship. When we come back, it'll be the second intermission, and we'll share our thoughts again as part of this special presentation on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Owen Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary Projects a reality. Ever wanted to work on your balance but you're not sure how to start? Join me, Christina Marquis, on Homebody Fitness. We'll work your balance, decrease your falls, and get you fit just in time for the winter. Only on Homebody Fitness, Rogers TV. Your mouth can do a lot of amazing things. And your mouth can save a life. Hi, I'm Tom Wong. I'm just one of close to 1,000 Canadians in search of a stem cell match. We need your help. A simple swab is all you need to register on the National Stem Cell Database. You could be the one to save a life. Find the hero in you. type who would keep going or stop it's not easy to stop when you have an addiction legalizing cannabis won't stop addiction it trivializes its consumption let's be vigilant if you need help visit portage.ca getting set for the start of the second period more great sports action coming your way tonight on Rogers Sportsnet one it's Derek Rose and the Chicago Bulls taking on the Hawks in Atlanta that's game four of that Eastern Conference series and the number one rated Bulls with a two games to one series lead, eight Eastern, five Pacific. Two games to one is also the count in this series with the majors in front and a bit of a different twist to period one in game four. Yeah, we have seen each of the first three games of this series, both teams come out even Steven. The same thing happens here, except no goals scored. Both teams a lot tighter checking, a lot better on the penalty kill. The result, no score, but it hasn't been without chances. The goaltenders have been pretty good. An exciting week for up and coming top prospects. The Ontario League staged its priority selection draft yesterday. And here's some of the young men who are coming to an OHL arena near you and soon. 
Well, these two teams, of course, uh, picking near the end of the road. Scott Teske, the junior Canadians, goes to Mississauga. And Zach Nastasia, Nastasiak, whose uh, father, Paul, played in the Canadian Football League, picked 20th overall by the Owen Sound attack. So congratulations to all the players selected yesterday. And the same could be said in the Western Hockey League on Thursday when they held their annual Bantam draft. Jake Burton, a young man from British Columbia, went first overall in that draft. There's Dale DeGray, the general manager. Right there, uh, presenting the jersey to the first round pick. And, you know, that's always an exciting time. And, Peter, when I look at this Owen Sound team, this is a team that's got some staying power. You look at some of the young guys, of course, you're going to lose some of your older guys. But there's some really exciting young players. When you talk about Brace and Petgrave and... You look at Shaw with the opportunity to come back. Maybe Halmo is an overager. This is still going to be a, a good hockey club for Mark Reed's moving forward. Agreed. And you take a look at some of those prospects. If how I watch them perform at the Canada Winter Games is any indication, there's plenty to be excited about in this country going forward in the CHL. Best development league in the world. And we've got a beauty on display here today. Percy outlets it, shug a touch, no icing. Sidor missed it. Fortunately, Stanish was there to cover up. I think he planned it. No, he didn't. Blacker. <laughs> he both swing and a miss. Exactly. There was another one that could lead to an opportunity. Sizikas off the glove, and Sidor took a look at his catching glove to see if he had it. Great seam pass. Fleming intercepts. Blacker chopped it away and from help from Garrett Wilson. The puck left the zone. Devontae Smith Pelly, the Anaheim second rounder on the shoot in. Flick in the corner. Flick, a whack from Hishin. Flick looking for a penalty. Hishin leading a three on two. And an excellent one on one defensive play by Dylan DeMello. Brace in transition. Fake the pass and just missed on the short side and a penalty upcoming to the majors now. Well, Peter, you look at this Mississauga Hockey Club and you have to be so appreciative of their back end as you see Rob Flick making his way towards the box, protesting the call. You know what he's really mad about? Not so much the call on him, but what happened to him. And there's Flick. I mean, his stick gets caught in Shaw. And he figures that Shaw was going to get the hole. Instead, Flick ends up in the box. And how about Joey Hishin? DeMillo does a great job here. He shortens the gap on Joey Hishin, makes a simple play separating man from puck, and then initiates a breakout thereafter. Dylan DeMello, extremely underrated in the back end for Dave Cameron. Moved up over 70 spots in the most recent NHL draft rankings as Shaw has his stick chopped away from him and for the first time in the game Owen Sound will enjoy a lengthy two-man advantage. And this is exactly where Owen Sound has to show its discipline. Everyone gets together after the whistle. Shaw skates away. Halmo's in there. He too needs to skate away from things and they do exactly that to enjoy their first five on three. Good burst of speed by Shaw coming through the zone. He gets it through the stick of Fleming, but then has his stick chopped right out of his hands. Good things happen when you use that speed. You can see the Mississauga defenders standing still. It was Fleming on one hand, and then Cramarosa who comes down with the hack on the stick. And this is a huge juncture in the game as Dave Cameron's team will look to J.P. Anderson to try and thwart this five on three. Owen Sound in the early stages of the first able to kill off a lengthy two-man majors advantage. Now they possess one of their own. Blacker to Stanish. Down low, the return feed. Blacker and Stanish on the exchange. McNarty, Stanish, and a shot blocked by Sezikis, who chops it down the ice. My goodness, Canton racing the other way with his team two men short. Better not get caught. Garrett Wilson puts on the brakes. Finds Hishin, the crafty playmaker. McNardi to the front of the net. Blacker 
Wilson now takes a look through the seam. He'll shoot it. Anderson the save. The rebound. Wilson scored a power play goal on Friday. His first of the series. Blacker and Stanich. McNardi blocked by Fleming who dropped to his knees to do so. Percy leans on Wilson with a pretty good shot. Blacker. Stanish thought about the one-timer. Blacker will drive it off the outside of the net. Blacker pestered by Percy. Blacker controls it with his skate. Stanish now. Shot blocked by D'Souza. Down low, McNarty and Anderson read it beautifully. Blacker thwarted by Anderson. Slap shot by Hisson. That went off a body in front on this two-man advantage that's about to come to an end as Flick back on the ice. D'Souza and Flick shorthanded. Chris D'Souza off the skate of Stanish and just went it wide. What an effort by D'Souza. Block shot still has the ability to skate it out. Blacker is spin around him and then ran into Hisson. And just like Owen Sound in period number one was able to do, Mississauga kills off an Owen Sound two-man advantage in this frame. Well, who's going to break first in this game? Berdnikov to Keevan Cutting. Deflected by Garrett Wilson for the speedy Andrew Shaw, who has four points in this series. Hits it, the Majors leading postseason score. The Boston prospect clears it out of the zone. Well, good job here by Mississauga. Down five on three. You really need your top guys to be giving it all. And Chris D'Souza does that. I mean, he takes this shot off the inside of the ankle, and it is a rocket from Stanish. But he's still, while limping, able to lean on his stick a little bit, try the clearing attempt there. That didn't work. But later, he'd get position and have the ability to skate it out. You want to talk about your guys committing to the cause. Chris D'Souza doing that for Dave Cameron's Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Those are the kind of plays and efforts that help you win championships. Sezikis. Stopped up by Shaw, the number one line back out for Dave Cameron's team. But after the power play for a change, not matched against Hitchens line. David Corrente. Gilbert held it in, blocked up by Shug. Chops it. Puck remains inside the zone. And Corrente to Smith Kelly, who takes a hit to make the play. J. Gilbert to Brendan Childerly. A rare shift for Childerly. His wrister blockered with confidence away by Anderson. That Petrave on the shoot in belongs to Childerly. A rolling puck. And a right pad saved by Anderson again. Maidens to the blue line. Shevich to Petrave with traffic. Lots of it in front. Banks it off the end boards to Liam Helix. And in good defensive position was Jamie Wise. His shoot in for the speedy Cremorosa. And Petrave, who can skate with the best of them, pulls him off. Wise. On the wraparound try, Cremorosa and Zidore got there. Post to post. Riley breaks. Cramorosa and Wise. The energy line for Dave Cameron's team. Petgrave a steal and he wants to carry it out. Off of Gilas it's in. Played just over six minutes of period two in game four of this Rogers OHL championship series. The Majors with a two games to one lead. They won the first two. Made a nifty tip to Riley or make that Cameron brace. Cameron brace into the zone. And staying right with him is Fleming. He leads a four on one. Fleming and D'Souza. Fleming in front. Just sent wide by Canton, who is the fourth guy in the trailer. Always the most dangerous. Heating up again in period two, but still. 
Great defense leads to great offense. And here, Cameron Brace brings it into the zone. This puck has to go deep around the board. But when it doesn't, you have the offside defenseman here for Mississauga. And he'll jump into the rush. It turns into a four on one the other way. All right, there goes Brace. Fleming does a good job picking that puck off. Now the weak side defenseman immediately recognizes that he's got numbers. It's a four and one break for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Great play by Fleming to work defensively to take that puck away from Brace, but Brace has to be smarter and get that puck deeper into the zone. Fleming has showed you why, right there why he led the Ontario Hockey League in the regular season in plus minus. He was plus 60. And has become a really tough player to play against. Adds offense and is a pain in the rear end defensive. Fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals. Scored his first goal of the playoffs in the overtime setback going sound on Friday. Jared Maidens trying to contribute offensively for the first time in this set. The youngster, McNardi, he's done plenty of it. Off the pads of Anderson. Gilbert. Anderson again steered it away. Very hard fought affair. Best game of the series. No one's giving an inch here, and it's ultimately what it's going to come down to is a mistake. Helis, no connection, thus the icing call. You know, Peter, we've talked so much uh, about J.P. Anderson and how many games he's played. He's been amongst the top two all season long for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, but they had to make a really interesting decision when they brought in Chris D'Souza. And they went out and through the waiver wire, through the Sault Ste. Marie grounds, picked up Michael Adet, who does not play a lot. But Peter, give this guy a ton of credit. We watched him at practice yesterday. He was the last guy off the ice. And he maybe, more than anyone in the building, knows that he's not going to see a lot of time. Dave Cameron says he's an extremely hard worker on the ice, and he carries that same work ethic off the ice. Good on him. Stanish. Zizekas intercepts back out with Kelly and Shug. The Majors number one line against the Owen Sound number one unit of Hish and Wilson and Brace. And Zidore hangs on. And Zizekas chop at the end, drawing the ire of the crowd. But I don't know if Zidore really had that puck covered up properly. Of course, it took a little while for the whistle to blow. And you'll see, as it goes to the front of the net, he kind of awkwardly covers it up with the glove. He can't find it. It's actually by the pad. That puck is still loose. And that's why Sezekis went in there and took a chop at it. That puck wasn't covered up. Percy reads it on the pinch. Shot down low, tipped by Smith Pelly right through the crease. Fleming supports. Smith Pelly. When he protects it and that wide body, it's tough to dislodge. Pretty good job by Stanish there, though. And Percy runs into traffic in the neutral zone. Heavyweight affair between two teams that will both participate starting May 20th in the MasterCard Memorial Cup that we'll show you all of. Wall to wall right here on Rogers Sportsnet. Oh. Shug into the zone with Sezikis. And Blacker a good reverse. That's the simple type of play that Blacker needs to make on a regular basis. Smith Kelly takes a run at Big Wilson, the Florida fourth rounder. Joey Hishon. There's a guy with some edge to his game. Wilson dancing into the zone, still with it. Stuart Percy, he was just plus 50 during the regular season. Ice is it. Peter, Mississauga scored 287 goals. That was most in the Ontario Hockey League, but really they made their hay playing defense. The penalty kill, second in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs here. Goals against the just over two. And the one thing that they do so well is allow few shots against J.P. Anderson. 25.3 shots allowed. That is the lowest by any team in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs on average. 17-13, an edge for the home attack. Nine minutes into this second period. Shemich. For Burdnikoff and then Halmo off his skate. Kramarosa trying to backhand it deep in the zone to Wise along with Such. Greg Such. 
Knocked off the puck by Shemich and Petgrave in tight quarters. Off the stick down the ice, a race for it. Shaw, Burdnikos by himself in front. Garazio breaks it up in front of the net, and Camarosa came back defensively to prevent a good scoring chance. Shemich. Halmo on the cycle. Michael Halmo. With Sean Burdnikoff and Parente wants to clear the zone, fails to. That Petgrave will stutter step at the line before it's whacked down the ice by Such. And another icing call. Top scorers are brought to you by Prestone. When you own it, Prestone it. Well, Thomas Kanakal of the Windsor Spitfire still leading the way, but uh, Robbie Ignardi and Alexander Kokochev tied for second spot. How about Shaw and Wilson? I think Shaw has been fantastic all series long. Garrett Wilson also with 19 points, and the depth of these two hockey clubs really coming to the fore. Mississauga with 10 plus points. They have eight players in that regard, and Owen Sound, nine players with 10 or more points, and that's the one thing that we saw coming in to the J. Ross Robertson Cup Championship Series, that these two teams had a ton of depth, and now that we're not so much into a penalty game, we're really seeing that depth from both sides. Even cutting. McNardy down low with Helis and Jared Maidens. Maidens tied up by Mark Kent. Rob Flick. D'Souza chops it out of the zone. Even cutting. Reverses to Jay Gilbert. Gilbert with a couple of key assists in game three's overtime win on Friday. Loses it to Flick for Maxim Kitson. Kitson greeted by Cutting, who made a good play. Puck still in the zone. D'Souza and Gilbert with a good stick. To block that shot attempt. Majors with the pressure. Can't the shot. And Zidore came out to cut down the angle. And a good job by Zidore to keep this thing scoreless, Peter. Faceoffs are so key. When we look at the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors here losing this draw, you'll see Kevin even cutting cut across. And watch the play by Robbie Gnardi. He slides back. Now the puck can come back this other way, and then the puck ends up going deep. A good job here in the execution by Owen Sound. Cutting slides over, McNardi moves across, puck goes deep in the zone. Great execution by Owen Sound on the faceoff. I see you've got a new friend today. Ah, a new toy to play with, it's nice. Wasn't much of finger painting, but we're giving it a try now. How are you with the colors? Oh yeah, I love it. Calvo, Shaw. And Burdnikov, how about the shot, rebound! And Shaw, who always seems to be around the puck in the net, went there with some presence and ended up knocking the net off its moorings. And Shaw has that uh, great speed, and he is not afraid at all to go to the net. Almo, just a little stutter step. He knows he's just going to flick it on goal. It's not a tough shot. He's hoping for the rebound, and so too is Shaw. So with that great speed, it's Shaw who comes flying at the net. Ends up knocking it off thereafter, but a good read on the part of his line made Helmo to say, hey, I'm just going to flick this thing in front of the net and allow Shaw to go down and bang a crack. 22 in the regular season, 10 in the postseason. For the 19-year-old from Belleville, Ontario, Andrew Shaw. Helmo can't get to the front. Jordan Mayer shoots it in. Two goals in this building in game number two. Mika Parton in the shot, rebound. Loose in front, and Shemich. Good defensive position on Jamie Wise to prevent a shot on the rebound. Halmo has to wait, and Durazio takes over. To Corrente. Few more icing calls than we witnessed in the first period. Peter, you said it best. Great defensive play by Jeffrey Shemich. And this is sealing off your defender. As this rebound comes out, watch Shemich, middle of your screen. He simply does everything he can to take Wise out of the play. Get a stick in his lane, push on his body, send that puck into the corner. That's a loose puck in a very tough area. Shemich does a great job eliminating Wise. Not necessarily a point producer, a member of Canada's under-18 team at the 
2010 World Under-18 Championships in Belarus, but he's accounted for nine assists. And he missed a lot of time with a broken arm this year, so it was big getting him back on that back end. Again, Owen Sound using some home ice board advantage. Stanish off the end boards, and Wilson with a quality scoring chance. And again, because of a good face-off win, Joey Hish in the center for Owen Sound, able to get it done off the draw. And you can see Owen Sound take possession as it goes to that point. Stanish has no uh, thought whatsoever of getting that puck to the net. At least not on the direct route, but he knew he had the bounce pass off the end board. Hishin's line once again matched versus the Hishin line. Shot by Cameron Brace wide of the net as he used his best attribute of speed. Race reaches to his mouth. I do not think there will be a penalty called, or will there? You gotta like Brace Peter in the game he brings. He's got great speed. He's still learning an eighth round pick. What a steal for Dale DeGray. Picked up in the eighth round and now getting the opportunity to play on that top line with Wilson and Hishin. And I think his speed really fits the skill set of the other two guys. A nice uh, job here and an adjustment by Mark Reed to moves Burdnikov off that first line and puts Brace up there with his good wheels. McNardi up front with Maidens. And Liam Helix. Hits him to Souza. Flick. Long wrist shot by Gilbert made its way through to Anderson. McNardi pressed by Rob Flick. Helix trying to shovel it in front. Hit Mark Kant with it. Canton will play in his third Memorial Cup. Did so with Belleville in 08 and was part of the Windsor winning squad one year ago in Brandon. D'Souza in deep on the four check. Windsor race. Kitson lets it go. Stopped by Zidore and he'll cover up. Some of the chopping in this series oh. has been a little legendary around the goals. I'd yeah, make Hacksaw Jim Duggan a proud man, that's for sure. And you get your stick down in the zone in front of the goaltender and look out. You better either have a very light grip on it so it gets hacked out of your hands, or you better have a strong stick. And for Rob Flick, who we touched on at the top of the broadcast, a pretty steady game. Flick, you know, will be in the middle of it. He was second oh, yeah. in the regular season in the league in penalty minutes. Boy, his game has just grown by leaps and bounds. And he has really benefited from the coaching of Dave Cameron, who has asked of this guy to come out, give his maximum effort each and every game. And as a result of that, he's been rewarded with some time that when you look at the start of, the, of his career, there's no way this guy would have played power play or would have seen the kind of minutes he does five on five. But he's been rewarded because of his hard work. We saw in game three, he can shoot it. Seven postseason goals for Fleck. Goals at a premium here today after there were 11 scored Friday at the Hershey Center in Mississauga. These games couldn't have been any more different. Head no. Cramarosa causing all kinds of problems, but Petrave able to protect it. And make a play to Shemis. Good lead pass off the stick of Burdnikov. No icing, even though there was a few complaints from the Majors bench. Durazio to Riley Brace, who deflects it as far as the line, and Stanich carries in on left wing. Matt Stanich right through the goal crease, nobody there. Cameron Brace, stick lifted by Greg Sutch. Such a wrister. Zador turned it into the corner. And Stanich with his head up the long lead pass. Cameron Brace has it stolen by Mika Parton. And the finish winger. Parton with speed going to that and then he lost an edge. Looked like he had some room to get there too before he did so. Jesse Blacker, a second round pick in 09. Of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Stick left by Fleming. No icing. Loose puck. Brace a shot and it's blocked. Hit Percy. Cameron Brace to Wilson. Can't quite transfer from skate to stick. Didn't have much time or room to do it. Uses that big frame to control it on the boards. 
Gilbert to Keevan Cutting. Cutting his shot, and Anderson hangs on. This message brought to you by Geography Major Pete Lombardi. And they are thoroughly enjoying what has been a highly contested affair in game number four of this Rogers OHL Championship Series. Our terrific statistician Scott Carruthers pointing out that through three games, these teams have averaged 8.7 goals a game. Today, you know how many have found the net. Dylan DeMello. Shug goes rink wide for Devontae Smith Pelly. Sezika Smith Pelly moves in. Sidor solid as a rock one more time. The birthday boy. But Dave Cameron says the best play in hockey still remains the give and go. And a good job here by Smith Pelly. Just a little tap ahead off the board. Sezikis gives it right back to him. Now that opens up a wide lane to the net. Smith Pelly with that hard shot. Just can't get it by Michael Zador. And although it hasn't been exactly an oil painting for Zador, he still made all the stops he's had to. And you know what, Peter? He allowed five goals to Zador in game number three. But he made big saves when he had to. And at the end of the day, he came out with a W. And he's held Mississauga scoreless on this one. Smith Pelly hasn't been easy to stop. He has 11 in these playoffs. Four in this series. Shug. Smart play to backhand it. Away from pressure and out. Gilderly getting a spin in the top line with Wilson and Hisham. Carries in now to Brendan Childerly. Teed it up perfectly. Put it right on the tape of Wilson, but he fanned on it. Sharp angle shot by Hisham. Childerly. Petgrave moves in. He'll let it go. Blocked. Childerly a chance. Hit a skate. Petgrave that stopped up by Smith Pelly. And Smith Pelly with an excellent flip. Is that onside? Yes, it is. Sezikis, excellent defensive play. Sezikis jams at it. And Zidore able to keep it out. Peter, you have talked about Owen Sounds back end playing its best game in the series, and I couldn't agree with you more. We saw Shemich on a great play earlier in this game, and here on the two-on-one, he just gets down and dirty, takes it off the skate, and then he fights tooth and nail to keep Sezikis from jamming that puck in. What a great flip pass by Devontae smith Pelly, And you can see Zizek as he had the open man shove on the far side, just couldn't get it to him thanks to a great defensive play and a good skeet and stick work by Jeffrey Shemich. That is by far and away the closest opportunity for the puck to enter the goal today from Captain Casey Sezikis. And another face-off upcoming deep in Owen Sound territory. With the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, Michael Odette uh, doing his best to chip in here, speaking with the captain, Casey Sezikis. Sezikis, a member of Canada's World Junior Team, scored two goals and added an assist in the silver medal winning effort. And you could definitely tell January 5th still pains him a lot. Funny, Peter, because a lot of people felt that he wasn't uh, deserving of being on that team, but it wasn't long thereafter when you see how hard he works that he was a, a big part of Team might Canada. Have, might have questioned that until one shift on a penalty kill in Game 1 on Boxing Day against this man's team, Maxim Kitson, who won a gold medal with Russia and nearly opened the score. Peter, the L.A. prospect, Max Kitson, really shoots the puck, and he doesn't need a lot of wind up to get it to the net in a hurry. Puck turned over by Owen Sound. Kitson slides in and he gets a lot of whip in that stick from the face-off dot forcing Zador to come up big. You put it best all the time, pal, when you describe Kitson. Shoots it and passes it like a pro. You better be ready when you're on the ice with him. Helis with Mignardi. Liam Helis threw it in front. Just missed the on-rushing Robbie Mignardi. Parente slides it for D'Souza. Finds Flick with Kitson and Gilbert with a good stick to tap it away from him at center. How about D'Souza's shot block during uh, the penalty kill earlier in this period? Pramorosa runs into Keevan Cutting. D'Souza in the corner, sharp angle shot and a tougher save 
than Sonor probably thought it was going to be. 23-22 shots on goal in favor of the Majors. It's clearly been that even all day. That's a very good reflection of play. Shaw working on Fleming with Roman Bernikov from Oakskin, Russia. Shemich, his wrist, a big rebound, cleared, not out, Helmo had a chance, hit a body and went wide. Bernikov to Shaw. And Mayer literally kicks it and forces it out of the zone, and Bernikov will try and clear it right back in, and a little toe drag forced an offside. Peter, you look at uh, Garrett Wilson and Joey Hishon throughout the course of the regular season, the top two point getters for the Owen Sound attack. Now their point totals throughout the playoffs have been good up until this series. Three points and a combined minus nine for those two players, although I really like the efforts that both of those players have given Mark Reeds here today. And both maybe a little bit frustrated, but not showing the signs of frustration that we've seen from them earlier on in the series. 19 points between the two of them in the Western Conference Championship win over the two-time defending Memorial Cup champion Windsor Spitfires to finally put an end to that fabulous run. Sizikas and Hishin working at one another. DeMello keeps it in at the line. All right, let's go! Sizikas shot blocked by Hishin and a good one. Some pressure on again for the Majors. Blacker. Canton, a quick wrister. Sounded like it would have broken Brace's stick. And he leaned on it, but it appears to be fine. As Cameron Brace races in, he nearly broke Canton's stick. Just over a minute to go. No goals in game number four. Series 2-1 in favor of Mississauga. Rob Flick banks it off the boards, and here's Shemich again. Fourth round pick of Tampa Bay, and in this game, showing why. However, as I say that, he's stripped to the puck. D'Souza can't beat Petgrave. Kitson carries on. Kitson and Petgrave with help from McNarty. D'Souza to his knees, back up. Shemich a rolling puck. Tied up by Kitson. Helis wants to exit the zone, and he'll do so with that high flip. Kitson on right wing, and that is just offside. Peter, you talk about Chris D'Souza. We saw a shot block a, a little earlier in the game, but a good job here. You see Shemich cut through the neutral zone. Now he gains the line, and just as he's about to get it deep, it's good on the backtrack by D'Souza. Pickpocket Shemich brings it back the other way and helps gain the offensive zone for the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. That's the type of effort that's required by Dave Cameron if you're going to spend a lot of minutes out there on the ice. D'Souza has a couple of goals in this series. 20 seconds left in the period. And a change or maybe an equipment issue for David Corrente. Nope, just a change. And an important faceoff win late in the frame for the Majors. Penn backhands it into the zone. Jay Gilbert, the partner, Keevan Cutting. And one last second try upcoming for Dave Cameron's team. You know, Peter, one thing we saw Owen Sound do really well in game number three, they used the middle of the ice extremely well, and they were able to stretch the ice and spread it out. And in this situation, uh, Dave Cameron is able to say, hey, what we want to do here is step up in the neutral zone. As this puck goes up the middle of the ice, it goes D to D. Now this is a long pass, but a great job on the step up right there. And a stick lift by Mark Canton forces the icing call. Sean Reed on the headset. And chatting now with the two respective captains, Garrett Wilson and Casey Suzekin. My guess is that Mississauga would like to put some more time up on the clock. But as of yet, it still remains 2.8 seconds. 
Smith Pelly to take the draw for Dave Cameron's team. I wonder if he'll be just trying to get it to the net or trying to get Hishin out of there. Right now he looks poised to try and send it towards Michael Zador. And had an opportunity to do it as the buzzer goes. Well, Peter, these two teams uh, have played extremely hard today, and it's going to come down to a mistake in the third period of play. But, boy, what a hotly contested battle this has been. Playoff hockey at its finest. Mark Reed's team would love to draw even in this series. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the Onsan Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. Same thing my family's been doing for hundreds of years. We're going to lose the farm. We're going to the Supreme Court. If you win, no farmer could ever be sued for saving his seeds again. Since when did we start locking people up without a trial in this country? I'm going to make him pay. He has been held against his will for six years without a single charge being laid against him. I am innocent. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV Community Billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the Community Billboard. You never know what kind of shenanigans we're going to be up to. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones about rail safety. Visit StopTrackTragedies.ca. Welcome back to the second intermission of Game 4 of the Ontario Hockey League Championship Series in 2011. A special presentation of Rogers TV honoring the 10-year anniversary of Owen Sands first ever OHL Championship. However, the attack still had some work to do. After two periods in game number four, the game is still scoreless. Owen Sands still trailing 2-1 in the series and one thing that stood out, Mark McKelvey, is the parade to the penalty box did not continue in period number two. It was a tight checking affair in that second frame. Yeah, it certainly was. We saw a ton of penalties there in the first period. But in the second period, just two penalties called. Both went against the majors. It was early in the frame, as you saw. And Owen Sound was unable to capitalize. And they had some two-man advantage opportunity time there. So with Owen Sound being unable to cash in there, momentum certainly shifted to the majors. Neither team able to break through. And I'm sure Owen Sound heading into the dressing room after that second period knew that they maybe squandered a little bit of an opportunity early in that period. But neither team had given in to this point. And I, I think at this point, Manny, we go from what was a 6-5 game in game number three, now in game number four with 40 minutes down. And both sides know it's probably only going to take one in this game as we head to the third period. Even though Owen Sound had the power plays, they only outshot Mississauga 14-13 in that second period. J.P. Anderson standing very tall in the major's goal and Michael Zador playing his part in the Owen Sound goal. Who would score first in game number four? Do you remember the third period of game number four coming up next as Rogers TV continues to present a special edition of the 2011 OHL Championship Series between the Owen Sound Attack and the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. Enjoy period number three. 
Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the On Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our On Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make rotary projects a reality. I'm on some Mary Ann Barty. To find out what is happening in our city, please watch our council meeting on Monday nights at 7 p.m. on Rogers TV. On Rogers TV, we have a reality show like no other. It has a great cast of characters. Some you may have even helped land the role. Each episode has something different. Plans are devised, decisions are made, votes are cast, and money is spent. It's local reality TV that you won't want to miss. And it's exclusive to Rogers Cable customers. Catch your municipal council coverage on Rogers TV. Visit rogerstv.com for broadcast details. Now you can enjoy the Amazon Prime Video app on Ignite TV. Just say Amazon Prime Video into your Ignite voice remote and watch Amazon Originals like The Expanse. They wanted a fight. We'll give them one. The Wilds. Are we in the actual Bermuda Triangle? And The Boys. That is amazing. Prime members can stream Amazon Originals, movies, TV shows, and more on Ignite TV today. Now you're in command. 20-year-old from Mississauga came over in a deadline deal from the London Knights and has contributed, as we just showed you, in so many ways, including a couple of goals in this championship affair. Mark Reeds, Terry Virtue, the coaches here in Owen Sound. As a matter of fact, Terry Virtue played for Dave Cameron when he was closing out his pro career in Binghamton, and Dave was the coach there of that American Hockey League team. Who will break this deadlock? Third period underway, game four. One team looking for the stranglehold, the other wants to draw even. Before game number five, Tuesday, back at the Hershey Center. Wilson upended by Shug, and Stanish shifted into his own bench. You have to be so aware of Mississauga because they do so well on the back track and that's something that's preached by head coach Dave Cameron throughout the course of his practices and Peter it's funny we talked about the challenges of of being a head coach at this time of year when you look back at you know all the various camps 16 17s 18s world juniors you got prospect camps you got rookie camps you got some guys who go to NHL main camps I mean it's a lot of hockey by the time you get to this point of the year quick whistle it was not frozen and those are the breaks you get when you have been quick to freeze a lot of pucks earlier in the day. Michael Zador in his second straight start in this series. Scott Stager played games one and two, the New York Ranger draft pick. And Zador has answered the bell. Both teams love using the end boards here, trying to create some offense. Kitson into the slot area. Can't beat Keevan Cutting. That came outside the line, and the linesman right on it. Mark Canton will take his MasterCard Memorial Cup experience and continues to share that with his teammates. Part of the reason why Dave Cameron went out and acquired he and Justin Shug from the Windsor Spitfires. And it's so important not to just get you through this championship, Peter, but to be able to perform admirably at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Because as we've witnessed, that is a completely different animal. Always seems to be one team that just doesn't perform up to its normal capability. Maidens. Down low, McNarty jamming away at the side of the net. Jared Maidens. Stick lifted by Canton, who's been paired with Dylan DeMello. And Canton, a quick spin away from the rookie Maidens. Kitson up the middle to Rob Flick with D'Souza. Flick shoots it in. He and D'Souza head off. Kitson stays out there. Shemich. Fans on his middle breakout try, but some help from Berdnikov. And Shemich makes no mistake using the boards to clear the zone that time. Hit 
Musgrave to step up. The game five over, or game three overtime hero. Ferdinikov. Stopped by Corrente. And here's Mika Partman. Didn't get to center. Said it was okay anyway. In North America, you get away with that. And Zidore traps it somewhat nonchalantly at the side of the net. Peter, when you play a team so often, you really get to know their tendencies. And Matt Petgrave recognizes here that Mississauga wants to go D to D and up the strong side. As Durazio makes that pass, Petgrave steps up, takes that puck away from Parton, and then the Owen Sound attack able to move into the offensive zone thanks to a good, smart play from Matt Petgrave. And the type of play that resulted in that overtime goal Friday night in Game 3, 56 seconds into the extra frame. That good efforts from... Liam Helis and Garrett Wilson exiting the zone before Petgrave could take it into the zone and fire it past J.P. Anderson for the game winner. Wilson literally dove out of the zone. Excellent effort. Gilbert to McNarty. He's pressed. Jamie Wise in front for Such. Tied up. Helis avoids a shoulder try from Cramarosa. That's probably a good thing. McNarty. Percy back after it. Mr. Steady Eddie on defense. Maiden's good dish off. McNarty whistled it. High on Anderson. The 13 goal getter, the leader in the playoffs, Robbie McNarty, got all of it. Another chance for McNarty and a save by Anderson, who's showing you why. He was one of the best goaltenders and a finalist for the OHL Goaltender of the Year today. And Dave Cameron expected a bounce back from J.P. Anderson. He's getting it so far. You have to love that when you see that in a goaltender. The ability to have a less than perfect night. Although to his defense on Friday, there were a number of goals that certainly couldn't be blamed on him. You know he'd want to take a couple back, but Durazio trying to get, or Cramarosa rather, trying to get this puck out. Good effort by Jay Gilbert to step up, keep that puck alive. It gets over to McNarty for a good shot on goal. Owen Sound would continue and give McNarty one more chance. But foiled on full occasions by the aforementioned J.P. Anderson. Tip by Shug, and all he's done is score four game-winning goals of his seven in these playoffs. Shug a chance from a sharp angle. He missed DeMello on the pinch to Smith Pelly with Shug and Casey Sizikas off the skate of Blacker, headed towards a corner. Cameron Brace on side of the line. Joey Hishon with Wilson up front. Backhander by Wilson, not a lot on it. And now DeMello into it with Hishon, and they have seen lots of one another. Hishon goes down to draw a penalty. Brace pretty much the same story. Yeah, Hishon's that type of guy who can really get under your skin. He'll be the first guy entering every fray. And oftentimes the last guy out of him. And he'll be talking the entire time he's in there. Nothing further will result here as Justin Chug skates away from the fray. He has a word with Scott Ferguson, the referee. And you'll see as this puck comes loose, what a job by Cam to take the stick of Brace away. Arguably could have been a hook there as Brace went to the ice. Could have been. Should have been. Brace had a wide open lane to the net. Puck on top of the mesh. So another faceoff coming up. To the right of J.P. Anderson. Brett Fleming in the major. Looking to take a commanding three games to one lead. Getting all they can handle from the Western Conference champion. Here in Owen Sound where they won a team record 26 times at home during the regular season. And the pace of play really deadening with all the whistles, but that's just because neither team wants to give an inch in that neutral zone. And so when the teams get it there, Everyone's just trying to jump the gun. Look for that little offensive flare, that early entry into the zone. A couple of offsides here. Fleming to Stewart Person. 
Sador at the side of the net. Gilbert almost shoveled it on target. Loose in front. Sador dives on it. Little miscommunication involving the goaltender and veteran defender Jay Gilbert. Yeah, good job by the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors here. And what they do is they move this puck D to D. And from the D to D, it goes up to the strong side. And from there, a very easy entrance into the zone. Here's your D to D, right up the boards by Percy. Little touch pass into the zone, just like that. Mississauga able to enter. Face off try by D'Souza. Fleming fans on it and taking no chances. Michael Zidore. Owen sound a little better in the face off department here tonight. So for Zidore has the confidence in his centerman to be able to win draws, covering it up quickly. We have Mississauga with a 27-25 edge in that department. Anderson swings it to Fleck with Kitson. Kitson took a look at Petgrave and stopped in pursuit of the puck. Makes a good pass to Percy and now D'Souza. D'Souza away from Shemich. Maidens came over defensively. And Maiden's back hands it to center. It's like Maiden's game today. Yeah, he's been very steady, and he's been rewarded for more ice because of it. And that's funny, Peter. You know, when we talked to Dave Cameron yesterday, he's talking to John Elkin, the goaltending coach, and saying, hey, how's JP feeling today? Well, he simply said that he's, uh, he recognized that it probably wasn't his best effort just one of those games. He's going to put it behind him and move forward. And because this guy works so hard, Dave Cameron really felt that he's got that strong foundation to rebound from games where he's not at his best. Building, getting cranked up again. You can just feel the tension in here right now, especially for the home fans. They know how important this is. Be difficult for anyone to come back from a 3-1 edge. Shaw versus Corrente. Kramaros and Burdnikov. Burdnikov wins the battle centers and intercepted by Jordan Mayer. Jamie Wise backhands it in. Mayer versus Gilbert. Mayer tied him up and Gilbert stays with it to backhand it to neutral line. It's over 14 minutes to go in regulation time. Still no goals. Cramarosa, a little tug on the jersey from Helmo. Canton keeps it alive. And Gilbert and Mayer continue their battle on this shift. Helmo to Keevan Cutting. Cuts back, courtesy of Smith Pelly. Nobody wants to give an inch. Here might be one. Brace into the zone to Helmo, but the puck's rolling. Helmo tried to flip it to himself as Shug shoots it in and gives chase. Stanish chops it right to Smith Pelly. Hard pass. Pass Kazikas. Dylan DeMello to Casey Sazikas. Stanish, nice one on one work against Smith Pelly. However, the puck belongs to Shug off the outside of the net. Stanish hits Pelly with it again. Smith Pelly to Justin Shug. Smith Pelly in the corner. We always talk about how he protects it. Now he shoots it. It hit Joey Hishin. The Majors top line buzzing, trying to break the deadlock. Smith Pelly launched it. Percy, great hustle to keep it in at the left point. Tzizekas on Stanish. Trying to get to the net. Pushed away and in behind it. And Wilson wants to clear. Blacker will. You know, Peter, sustained pressure there by the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, but Owen Sound doing a pretty good job one on one in the defensive zone. It's an area where they've made great strides the last two games, especially today. Here's Maidens into the zone. Jared Maidens in front, and Durazio hit his man. McNarty tied in a knot. Ah, this is fantastic. No score thanks to these two gentlemen, Michael Zador and J.P. Anderson, have each allowed, uh, or combined rather, allowed 11 goals in game number three, but have allowed the big zilch 
here this afternoon. And it hasn't been without teams getting chances. Shaw off the board, good backhand, traffic in front of the net. J.P. Anderson standing tall between the pipes. Doing a good job protecting the lower half of the net. And covering it up from there where he's got the opportunity. Mike Isidore doing much the same thing at the other end of the ice. 12 16 to go in regulation. Pivotal game for this OHL championship series. Mississauga has won all three games if you include the regular season. Or two games at least in this building. Trying to make it three. McNarty with Maidens. Robbie McNarty shot blocked by Canton Helis and sliding over to break it up was Dylan DeMello. Flick, bodied by Helis. Nice back check by Liam Helis. DeMello protects it against a couple of attack on coming four checkers and Canton backhands it out to center. Jay Gilbert, plus nine in this postseason to lead Owen Sound. Helis deflects it out of play. And Liam Helis just doing what he can here to get the puck deep, at the very least get a line change with the whistle. But a great job on the back check. You see Canton start to exit the zone. That first pass gets into the skate of Flick and watch Liam Helis in great position in the back check to send Owen Sound back into the offensive zone. So important when you're a forward that once that puck starts to leave the zone, you get on your horse and get back. You never know what's going to happen. Helis did that, created the turnover. Nika Partnan helped Finland to a bronze medal at the 2010 World Under-18 Championship. Shaw with Burdnikoff and Michael Halmo. Stuart Percy. Fleming has its roll off his stick and Partnan backhands it to the line held in by Shemich and now it's Percy carries to center. Great poise by that youngster. He saw the traffic. He said, all right, I'll just sidestep it. I'll get it across the line, and I'll get it deep, and then hit the bricks for a line change. Rated number 53 by NHL Central Scouting. I wonder if that will go up come June in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah, it wouldn't mind it. For Halmo, Parente with a step up. Both teams have done a real nice job in neutral ice. We just have not had a lot of odd man scenarios in this game. Yeah, and that takes a, a lot from your forwards because when that defenseman steps up, you have to have the defensively responsible forward taking his place to slide back in the back end. And both teams have done a really, really good job in that area. Andrew Shaw with his 10 postseason goals, including two he was the best player Friday in the 6-5 Owen Sound overtime triumph Sezikis and Hishin we'll see a lot of them the rest of the way Smith Pelly a chip then knocked it down with a high stick and that top line out there for Dave Cameron uh, Smith Pelly Sezikis and Justin Shug and for Shug who has MasterCard Memorial Cup experience he uh Continues to produce at a high level, but his game has stepped up here in the final. Almost a point per game more than what he had in the first three rounds. And how about of his nine goals, four of them, when it meant the most. Grace can't control it. Kept in. Hishin down low. Backhands it in front. Stanish a drive. And another shot blocked by Canton. And DeMello calmly the outlet. This guy might move up in the rankings, too. Uh, if you like your defensive defenseman and uh, knowing what you are, Camilla does that. Smith Kelly in a stick save by Zidor. And a good one. Stanish in his second straight league final. A member of the Berry team that was swept by Windsor one year ago. Brace Gilbert! Glove save by Anderson. 
Well, you look at these two hockey clubs uh, going back to last year and how much they've improved from one season to the next. And that really speaks to the cyclical nature of junior hockey. Niagara with the biggest differential. And then Owen Sound and Oshawa both 35 points better than they were a year before. And the Mississauga St. Michael's Major had a great year in 09-10, but really improved on that this year to 108 points. Mississauga will play host to the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Owen Sound will participate as well. Who will go in as the league champion? Today could say a lot as to that end result. McNarty versus Percy. Maidens jumps over, so does Fleming. Fleming comes away and reverses it to Petrave. Petrave a weak shot, Helis spins, hit flick with it. And Petgrave has it bounce over his stick in the line. Petgrave four goals, four assists in his last four games. McNarty to Maiden, slot his stick. Petgrave, sharp angle side of the net. Flick settles it down. And the Chicago pick uses the high glass to find a suit. One on one and a good play by Shemitz. But Once again. He's been terrific today. Petgrave, a good outlet for Maidens, who's at the end of his shift, wants to get to center. There's some nice composure for the recently turned 17-year-old Jared Maidens. Hurt, or else he would have represented Ontario at the under-17s, but he got hurt just before. Hishin into the zone. Weak shot, steered to the corner by Anderson, and poked to Shug. So dangerous in these situations is Shug. Smith Kelly. Casey Sezikis. Stick prevented a much more difficult save for Zidore. Smith Pelly didn't see it. DeMello did to keep it alive. Hishin. Backhanded. It's loose in the crease area. And cleared away from Sezikis. Garrett Wilson, the captain. In behind the net. He's upended a one handed backhand try. Jordan Mayer in transition, it's a three on two. Mayer, Smith, Pelly tried the touch pass, and Gilbert with a nice read to break it up. I think I said earlier that Gilbert was plus nine, he's actually plus 11. Don't want to take two away from him. Carries in Gilbert from Port Stanley, slides it to the front, cleared away by Durazio. Shaw, hard shot, Anderson the save. Starting to turn up a little bit here with seven minutes to go. Shaw at his stick lifted. Ramarosa to Riley breaks. Parente, Durazio, and Helmo in the shooting lane. Both teams have really done an excellent job of doing just that. Helmo misses Shaw. Parente with a burst. David Parente of all people. Stop. He doesn't have a goal in these playoffs. And he gets a lot on that shot as the door takes it off the shoulder. And you have to give uh, David Parente a lot of credit here. We've seen this a lot in this game. Look at Parente here. Good recognition. That pass just a little errant. He makes no hesitation in stepping it up. Carries it over the line with confidence and fires a bullet off that right shoulder of the door. This is a Dave Cameron type of hockey game, isn't it? Yep. Not uh, giving an inch. Neither is the opponent. Demich. Hit Rob. Flick with it. Flick back out with the Susan Kitson. And McNarty prevents him from shooting it. Helis into the zone on right wing. Percy chops it past Helis. And taking no chances and out of the zone is D'Souza, but he's iced it. It's time to find out what time it is with Dave Hamilton. Ready over here behind the attack penalty available, ladies and gentlemen. Two minutes. They just mentioned what time it is in the building. I know what time's important. 5.58. In case you're just tuning in, wherever you might be looking on, two games to one. We're in game number four. The host for the MasterCard Memorial Cup. The Mississauga St. Michael's Majors lead this series in Owen Sound here at home trying to draw even after losing games one and two. 
Real slugfest here between Dave Cameron, the head coach of the majors on your left, and Mark Reeds, head coach for the Owen Sound attack on your right. Former St. Louis Blue is Mark Reeds. Mentioned today in our chat about playing back in 1986 in a seven game Western Conference final that they lost to the Calgary Flames. Gilbert loses the handle and out it comes with a pesky D'Souza on top of him, but a quick tight turn by Gilbert. Maidens in a dangerous spot in the neutral zone with five and a half to go. But he didn't panic. Flick. Backhands it. Gilbert settles the puck down. Maidens. Terrific lead pass to Helis. Maidens again. This time on the cycle for Robbie McNardi. And Flick. Defensively responsible. Jesse Blacker. He has 14 postseason points. To Andrew Shaw. One-on-one -on -one with Percy. Seen a lot of that matchup today. Loose in front. Brace fan on it. Big rebound. Brace was set up perfectly in the high slot and busted his stick in half. Now the other end scores. And guess who? Justin Shug with 439 to go. What a turn of events. I mean, by all accounts, Bray should have had this one nothing for Owen Sound. And as he steps into this thing, his twig snaps. And now all Owen Sound is pointing and down towards the goal line. It comes back the other way. Here they are in pretty good shape. As this puck is dumped in, Shug basically passes it to himself. We've talked all game long about these lively end boards. So Shug throws it right along the ice, off the end boards, steps around Stanish, and from there picks it up and buries it. Justin Shugg's eighth of the postseason with 4.39 to go. A young man who has a chance this spring to do what, what only one other individual has done before, win three consecutive MasterCard Memorial Cups. And he's trying to win a third straight league title. Unassisted at 15.21 has finally opened the scoring. It looked rather innocent, didn't it, on the dump in? Didn't turn out that way. How many times do you see it? Great chance at one end and a goal at the other. Pet grave. Tripped up by Riley Brace, and there'll be a penalty. First of this period, and Riley Brace can't believe it. He has not seen a lot of action here in this period. Dave Cameron looking for a little energy and excitement, and he got a little more than he bargained for as Petgrave steps across. I mean, the stick definitely goes into the skate of Petgrave. There's no question, and although it may have been inadvertent, that stick is there to knock Petgrave off his feet. Owen Sounds 0 for 4 on the power play today. Glorious opportunity to tie the game. Hishon. Wilson has lost his glove and his stick. Fleming threw it to the corner. Hishon. His shot. Anderson scores. Robbie McNarty has tied it. Seventeen seconds in, and this building has gone nuts. They've been waiting for that all afternoon long. Good D to D work. Now Stanish gets it to his and his shot provides a great rebound. And not only is Garrett Wilson down there, so too is McNarty. And with those two own sound attack players in the slot, the Mississauga coverage picks up Wilson, but it fails to pick up McNarty. And we are back where we started a minute ago. All tied up. The role of Robbie McNarty continues. Points in nine straight playoff games. And a league leading 14 has tied it with 3.44 to go. Hishon and Wilson draw the assist on the power play marker. Smith Pelly back. He shovels one at the net. They try and knock it off the mesh, able to do so. 
So after all that time with no goals, two in a minute, Pishin trying to add more. His wrister over top of the cage. Wilson in the corner to Jesse Blacker and now Stanich off the end boards. Alert play by Anderson to steer it to the corner. Building, buzzing. Shagu opened the scoring. One hands it to Smith Kelly. Shug lets it go. He would have been offside. 55 seconds apart. Those two goals. Even strength by Shug is eight. Power play goal for McNarty is 14. Now the Owen Sound attack take advantage of the power play to tie this hockey game up just after their emotions were depleted because of the Justin Shug goal. Off the brace, miss. But this is a play here where once the puck goes to the front of that off his hard shot, a great job by Garrett Wilson. I like how Wilson sneaks in. Because he sneaks in, it draws all the attention of the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. They forget about McNarty and McNarty buries it. Clean faceoff win for the Majors. That play so evident using the backboards here. Shaw around Fleming, wrist shot from a sharp angle by Halmo. Anderson can't control it at the side of the net. And Fleming wins quite a battle to gain possession. Yeah, he wins a lot of battles. Fleck with D'Souza into the zone. Robert Fleck dances toward the net and runs into Keevan Cutting after he stepped around Gilbert. Canton at the left point. He'll shoot it, blocked by Gilbert. Canton again, through the seam. Terrific stop by Janor. He robbed D'Souza of the one-time wrister to keep it 1-1. Canton pinching, Mississauga with the pressure on. Looking for another go-ahead marker. Kitson with that strength on display. Kitson. In the corner, turning through the seam, intercepted by Cameron Brace, and ices it. And unlike the National Hockey League, where in this case, Owen Sound couldn't make a change, they can here. And they are thanking their lucky stars for Michael Zador. Great read and reaction. On a tough play, he has to go cross ice, but he can't overslide. He has to get there in a hurry, but not too fast, and Zador with his best save of the afternoon, keeping this knotted at one. No scoring in this game until 15-21 of the third. Wilson, a backhander, fan on it, loose in the crease area, a little dangerous. Here's Shug. That one won't stand as a game winner, which for him is unusual, but he still can craft some more magic. Into the last minute of regulation of game four. Mississauga leads the series 2-1. A wrist shot had made its way through. Blockered by Zidor. Shug. Through the seam. Fleming hesitates. Off the stick of Garrett Wilson. And Hishin moves it ahead. And here he comes leading a three-on-two. McNarty and Wilson. Hishin broken up in front. And it's Fleming again. To save the game. Great drama. Great drama here in the dying seconds. CHL action at its finest. What a prelude to the MasterCard Memorial Cup we've got for you on display here today. Canton into the corner for Jordan Mayer. Mayer held up by Shemich. Jamie Wise in front. Just missed Dylan Danella. Wow. And fittingly so in this one. 60 minutes for a second straight game. Not enough to determine a winner. Pretty amazing. Things open up a little bit in the last five minutes of this third period. About as exciting junior hockey as we have seen all season long. Justin Shug opened the scoring at 15-21, but 55 seconds later on a power play, Robbie McNarty sends this game to extra time. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie. 
president of the Onsound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our own Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. I joined because I wanted to help others. To be a part of something bigger. To show my kids what's important. I joined to make my community stronger. To make a difference in someone's life. To acknowledge that our freedoms come at a cost. I joined to honor my mom. My grandpa. My neighbor. Everyone who served. Who are serving still. I joined. I joined. I joined the Legion. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., it's the RTV Quiz. Giovanni Petiti hosts a weekly trivia competition that lets you play from the comfort of your couch. Play along at home and challenge your friends. And don't forget to follow along on social media. Let us know who's top of trivia, and you can find yourself featured on a future episode. Are you kidding me, folks? The RTV Quiz, Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. on Rogers TV or at rogerstv.com slash rtvquiz. an exciting game for welcome back to rogers tv i'm eddie pava along with mark mckelvey as rogers tv presents game four of the 2011 ohl championship series between the owen sound attack and the mississauga st michael's majors part of the special presentation here on rogers tv honoring the 10-year anniversary of owen sand's first ever ohl championship series we're bringing you all seven games and the pivotal game four now heading to overtime after a third period where two goals were scored in a game when no goals were scored in the first 40 minutes but the two goals in the third period mark were scored within a minute of each other it's funny how it goes isn't it manny that uh, it could take nearly an entire game for somebody to come through and it was justin shug who has been all over the ice here in this championship series. And he opens the scoring on a, a play that Owen Sound had executed many times to their advantage. It, it's the Bayshore. They know how the boards work there, but so too did Justin Shug. And maybe it's from some of that time over in the Western Conference, but it comes off the end boards out to Shug. He opens the scoring. And Owen Sound now has got very little time to try and tie things up, but they get a little bit of a break as Riley Brace would take a tripping minor and Robbie McNarty, man, he comes through tying it up. He was clutch all playoffs long. Yeah, as you may remember, Robbie McNarty won the Wayne Gretzky Trophy as the MVP of the playoffs that season in 2011 in the Ontario Hockey League. But that goal was huge. Hishin, Stanish getting assist on that goal. But Robbie McNarty, when he was acquired by Dale DeGray, uh, I don't know if many people um, it really knew how much of a veteran presence he would bring to this team, Mark. But boy, did it turn out in spades in this 2011 postseason. It did. And what's amazing to think about, and we've talked about throughout this series, was some of those players that were the veterans on both of these squads that had playoff experience from maybe other teams they had been a part of. But here was a case with McNarty. The only playoff experience he had coming into this postseason was two games in his rookie year with the Kingston Frontenacs. So now here he is in a spot in his final junior season, 
getting an opportunity in the postseason, and he was not going to waste it. That's for sure. 30 goals in the regular season over the 68 games, never missed a game that regular season. And here in the postseason, well, you just saw him add one, which would end up being 15 in total in the playoffs. It was an incredible run by a player who knew his junior career was coming to an end, and uh, he wanted to do everything in his power to try and help his team towards a championship. We talked about the intensity of game number four, and it's certainly been on display as you've been watching this game. But I thought maybe the pressure leaned towards Owen Sound. They're on home ice, down 2-1 in the best of seven series. That pressure certainly mounted towards the tail end of that third period after Shug scored. But as you talked about, Mark, before, this team answered the bell. They fought through the adversity to tie up this game and force overtime. And I talked about it earlier in the broadcast, the fact that that building at the Bay Shore on that Sunday was very tense. And that was not going to change heading to overtime because, to your point, Mississauga's one shot away from having an opportunity to head back to the Hershey Center and win the OHL Championship Series. Well, Owen Sound needs to put one in themselves to turn this into a best two out of three heading towards game number five. So there was a lot riding here. It was certainly a swing game. And uh, one thing's for sure. For the, how intense this building was going to overtime, well, I'll have to say that uh, the roof probably is going to come off it, which would probably be the loudest it had ever been as we head towards this overtime frame. Do you remember who the hero was in that overtime period? Well, there were more than one, but it was only one person who was able to put the puck in the net. Enjoy overtime of game number four of the 2011 OHL Championship Series here on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Bobby Gillespie, president of the On Sound Rotary Club. I'm here to thank our On Sound Attack Challenge sponsors. Their contributions make Rotary projects a reality. The deadly second wave of COVID-19 is devastating India. The situation is only going from bad to worse. The virus is spreading so rapidly, leading to people dying on streets. Your help is urgently needed. Your gift to the Humanitarian Coalition today will bring life-saving aid that is desperately needed. Please call the number on your screen or donate online now at together.ca. That's together.ca. The Humanitarian Coalition. Together. Saving more lives. October 5th, 2014, my daughter was hit by a train. She was walking along the sides of the tracks, and it shattered her world. <laughs> It's not a good idea for anybody to be out here alone. Have you thought about what you want your life to be now? I'm not running. I'm not hiding. I'm here because I choose to be. Hi, Bert. Ah, hey. To be on the set watching this dynamic, it was magic. Beautiful children will grow up. And they all beautiful. Right on. What kind of show do you want to see on Rogers TV? What interests you? Log on to rogerstv.com, fill out a show proposal, and tell us about your segment idea. We want to know what you want to see. Rogers TV, only on Rogers. Who knows a thing or two about scoring big goals in this postseason? The goalies at both ends have been terrific. Michael Zador and J.P. Anderson. Anderson actually, Sam, on the shug goal, now credited with an assist. And I believe there was a scoring change as well on the goal that evened it. It now reads McNarty's 14th from Matt Stanish and Joey Hishon. No longer Wilson, although Wilson almost deserved an assist at 16-16. Yeah, and I think when you look back at it, you won't care whether or not he's credited with a point. The fact that it went in and sent this thing in overtime would be surely good enough for Garrett Wilson. Those fans, you know what they're hoping for? A chance to wrap it up Tuesday at the Hershey Center. I had about four people look at me on the way to our broadcast location in the stands and say, they'll be back for game six. We'll see if that's the case. Owen Sound could make that happen with another overtime win and the extra frame is underway Kishin to the front of the net steered away and Brace goes heavily into the end boards 
Blacker, who has a power or an overtime game winner. He scored in game one of the Plymouth series. Right here on Rogers Sportsnet. Percy takes care of business, and he'll skate it towards Shug. Garrett Wilson away from Shug in the neutral zone. Wilson, the captain, Helis through the crease. Shug for Rob Flick. Flick with a big wrist shot, lets it go in Zidore, just got a glove on it, and then it's whistled by Smith Kelly, but well wide of the target. DeMello to his partner, Mark Kent. Shug already, Sam, I said he had three game winners in the playoffs. He actually has four. That would have been five. That's good production at the time when you need it most from a very experienced player at this time of year. Kitson for D'Souza in front, and Stanish, a solid defensive play to break that up. In transition, the youngster Maidens, nice lateral cut. Maidens is shot. McNorty to win it. And Anderson the save. Well, Jared Maidens has really come to play today for the Owen Sound attack. The fourth overall pick in last year's draft does a great job here, just delaying a little bit. And although the shot is wide, you have to respect the big bounce off the end boards. That's exactly what McNarty gets, and he almost ends it. But J.P. Anderson in good position. Robbie McNarty, in his lengthy OHL career, had only participated in two playoff games way back in 2007 with Kingston. He's making the most of the last opportunity. He looks like a guy who may never get back to this situation again. Petrave to Shaw. Shaw protects the puck, slides it to center. It's Parente. Ramarosa beats Shaw to the puck. Calmo to Petrave. Nifty spin to exit the zone by Petrave. And now he jumps up. Petrave dancing toward the net. Foiled by Anderson. You think he has a little confidence right oh. now? <laughs> Trying to win it early in overtime for a second straight game with Petrave. Calmo knocked off the puck, and icing will be the call. Petrave hanging his head, figuring he might have been able to do a little more with that opportunity. But you got to love the confidence of a guy who ended game three, steps right in, makes a beautiful move here to get by Carrente, but has the puck sweep by him. And man, oh man, I tell you, Peter, you get a young player like that in this high pressure situation, and he shows no ill signs of backing down. He goes right after it, and you got to like to see that. Owen Sound's top line out against the Major's top line. Stanish kept it in for a second. Sezikis towards Shug, buzzing again. Delayed offside, they clear the zone. Jesse Blacker. To Matt Stanish. Stanish into the zone to Garrett Wilson for Hishon. Off his skate, Anderson, it's under his pad. Oh boy. Just like that, J.P. Anderson has to find the puck through a crowd of legs and actually doesn't stop it with his pad, but stops it by putting his pad on the puck. It starts with a great job by Jesse Blacker. He's able to rush out of the zone. He gets a step on Devontae smith Pelly. Now that opens up the passing lane to Stanish. Good movement here. Wilson to Hishin, and it is tucked underneath the pad of J.P. Anderson. Maidens with Helis and McNarty. Against Fleck, Kitson and D'Souza. Maidens. Jay Gilbert, a low shot. D'Souza, odd man rush. D'Souza with Fleck. Fleck goes to the net, but shovels it wide and then tries to bank it off Sador. And the Majors with an odd man rush. Three and a half into extra time. Even Petting trying to play the role of Matt Petgrave steps up in the offensive zone. Once he misses, that allows D'Souza to go on that two-on-one with Flick. A diving opportunity by Gilbert. Can't thwart the pass of D'Souza. And Flick fans on it coming back the other way. Oh, so close for Robert Flick. Flick, who has four points in four games in this series. Parente, that's tipped. 
Hit in front, went off Jamie Wise and just wide. Perdnikov in transition. Perdnikov a wrister, it hits Durazio. Perdnikov a big hit on Durazio. They are trying to chop it out. Petrave will send it deep. Early in overtime. Owen Sound trying to draw even in the series after trailing at one point, two games to nothing. Referees urging them to play it. Will they finally blow the whistle? And indeed they do. And Burdnikov, great compete level on this shift. And that's something that's been lacking consistently from his game. Mark Reed saying, if we can get that kind of effort out of this guy on a nightly basis, we're going to find ourselves that right winger that'll cement himself on that top line along with Wilson and Hishin. Really good shift for Burdnikov. Burdnikov with two assists in the overtime win in game number three of this series. On Friday, and here we go again in extra. This one's already lasted much longer than that one. That ended 56 seconds in. Cross corner shoot in by Smith Kelly with Sezikis and Shove. Sezikis wins the battle, can't get to the net. Blacker cut him off. Shug to help out and has the puck. Justin Shug, Percy in front. Sezikis spins. Zidor stops him. Well, Zidor gaining confidence here. Makes a great save late in the third period and is called to the mat once again. Look at him working hard to find that puck as Sezikis spins around and gets to the front of the net. And Michael Zidor doing all he can to find it through that sea of legs to cover it up for another stoppage. Sezikis thinking that he could get a little more on it. Sezikis with six points in this series. McNardi. One hopper goes wide. And we saw what can happen on a shoot-in to yourself late in regulation when Shug opened the score. Especially with this fresh ice still here. Four minutes, 45 seconds into this overtime frame. The ice is still slick enough where you can get that rebound off the backboards. It was surely uh, good enough late in the third period when Justin Shug used the end boards to pass it to himself and open the scoring in this game. Looked like that might end it. But McNardi, 55 seconds later on a power play, drew Owen Sound even. Cutting. Gloved down by Mark Canton. Into the zone is Canton. His wrister off of cutting. Cutting again, up the middle to Liam Helis for Jared Maidens. And a little hesitation turned it into an offside. Jared Maidens talked about in the fourth overall pick, really cemented on that line with Liam Helis as the center. And Mark Reed is trying to explain to Maidens, hey, listen, as a young player, when that centerman gets the puck, all you need to do is worry about skating. Use that good speed, use that size, use that reach. The centerman will find it. Maiden Tails from Grimsby, Ontario has seven points in this postseason. Cramarosa cuts to the slot area, turned away by Petrave onside. Great stop off Riley Brace, loose in front, backhander. Zidore runs, Corinthians still loose in the crease. And it did enter the net, but clearly the whistle went. Wise working down low, Brace Cramarosa. This is a, a fourth line energy line that early in this hockey game saw a lot of time, but as the game progressed and the time got a little more important, Dave Cameron really shortened his bench to his top two lines. This line back out there again as they were to start the overtime frame and creating all kinds of havoc. The door figures he has it once again, and we saw this earlier in the game, Peter, where he's down, his blocker's down, but that puck laying beside his pad. Dave Cameron wants an explanation. He's looking why they're asking why was there a whistle there? That puck was free and Scott Ferguson's is safe. We're not that close. You need to put your hand on me. So Dave Cameron now. He wants them to go take a look is what he wants. And the other issue if we have a chance to rewind this back would be whether the puck might have been gloved in. I don't think they're going to go take a look. And I don't have to tell you how 
Canada's coach at the most recent World Junior feels about that. Listen, then the buzzer goes off, play goes on. Usually that means that the, the timekeeper wants to speak to the official. The clock is not running right now. It's going now. Not that it really matters necessarily in this situation. We'll have a look at Michael Zador here. And maybe a lesson too. He does not have this puck covered up at all. Let's have a listen. Clearly hear the whistle, and it's Wise who actually punches it in. In either case, it wasn't going to count. And I guess part of the argument was, hey, let's go upstairs. Part of the argument was, hey, you know, this puck was still alive. It should not have been blown dead. Now the officials will let some time run off the clock. I would say in the neighborhood of seven or eight seconds. Maybe closer to ten. Yeah. But certainly in that window, Scott Ferguson on the phone with the. You know, Peter, you have to pay attention to this sort of detail because you think about if this thing goes down to the final 10 seconds in the period and there's a face off and great point no by you. Zone, I mean, hey, an extra seven seconds can do wonders for you in that situation. So you have to pay attention to this detail now. It's easy to say, oh, it's 1 1, it's overtime, whatever else. But should this thing extend into the late reaches of the period, it will, this extra time will have meaning for somebody, surely. Great point. Fantastic point, in fact. If they try to set it properly. There will be less than the 14-20 that shows right now in this first overtime period. Game number four of the Rogers OHL Championship Series. Hope you are enjoying on this Mother's Day, wherever you are looking in. There were no goals in this game until 15-21 of the third. And Justin Chug makes a play, bounces it off the end boards, follows it up, and beats the door high glove side. That opened the scoring, but a short time later, Owen Sound goes in the power play. Big shot from Joey Hishon. Robbie McNardi in front of the net 55 seconds later to tie things up. And that's where we stand here into the extra frame. Shots in this game right now are 39 to 37 in overtime dead even at the end of regulation time games number three of the Western Hockey League final Portland on their way to Cranbrook to face the Kootenai Ice on Tuesday night they're tied at one and we'll be there for game three tomorrow the we Saint will John's be in Seedaw. attendance and at one of my Olympic. favorite buildings in all of junior hockey the Robert Gertan Arena what a job Ben Drew has done again. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise. All right. Don't sleep when that St. John Sea Dogs team. Gerard Glant, Hubert O, Beaulieu, Yurko. Yeah, they got, a, they got a lot going on over there, too. Can't wait for that one. The way this one's going, we might jump straight on the plane from here. No problem. And you know what? I'd be okay with that. Hiss it. Into the middle. Hiss and end it. Breeze and it. And in the save off Cameron Brace. Yeah, and no one sound wants a penalty here to see if Mississauga put this puck up over the glass. The officials are going to get together now and discuss whether or not this is going to be a penalty on the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. It looked to me that it directly went into the mesh. Off the rebound from Brace right here. It's flicked up, and there's no question that as that puck is not touched by anyone in a black jersey, and so indeed a penalty will be called. Have a look at it right here. Here's the defenseman Fleming. Flicks it right up into the air. There's nobody even near him. This puck goes out of play into the mesh. And Mississauga will be shorthanded here on the delay of game penalty. Oh, man. And a power play is what sent this game to extra time. Fleming can't believe it. And he had the unfortunate break of that puck being on end. So when he got underneath it, it was pretty easy to, enough to have the leverage to get it up over the glass and out of play. A six power play chance in the game for Owen Sound. They're one for five. They tied it with 3.44 to go. And out comes Hishon, Wilson, McNarty, Blacker, and Stanish. Jamie Wise 
makes his way to the Mississauga bench. Wants a new stick. Looks like he took the tape job out of the Max Kitson collection. And a little, yeah, a little hacksaw on Wilson. Face-off win, power play in overtime. Trying to draw even in this best of seven affair, the attack. Stanis, shot blocked by Wise and a clear by the captain, Casey Sezikis. Good hustle by Wise, gets out, fronts the shooter, good block. Blacker, somewhat dangerous, but that's him. He can be a little risky at times. Ton of upside, especially offensively for the Maple Leafs pick. Handles it here. The rolling puck settled by Stanton. Hishin to Blacker. Through the seam, McNarty had a great chance. Off the heel of his stick wide. Stanton for Joey Hishin. Through the seam, Stanish, Blacker, just drilled it wide. They knock it off the back of the net. Wilson, pestered by Mark Canton, but keeps it in. McNardi intercepted, and Dylan DeMello calmly shoots it right to Zidore. 45 to go in the penalty for delay a game to Fleming. And he might be a guy that Dave Cameron would want on the ice right now, too. It'll be dangerous coming out of the box, Peter. Well, two good chances by the Owen Sound attack. They, two have made an adjustment on that power play. Working Joey Hishin off the half wall. Instead, he slides up into that umbrella mode, and you'll see a beautiful seam pass, and McNardi, all he has to do is get any kind of wood on it, and this thing is over. Instead, off the heel of his stick, and J.P. Anderson gets a lucky break there off the stick of McNardi. Anderson, 37 saves. Petgrave. Matt Petgrave. Off the stick of Andrew Shaw, back to the point in Shemich. Hasn't scored since opening night, September 24th. Palmo, he's upended at the side of the net. Shug wants to clear and will have an opportunity to do so. Justin Shug, one hands it to Sezik, is very close to being offside. Play continues, and a penalty kill in overtime for the Majors. Berdnikov into the zone, Sean DeMello into the corner with help from Halmo and Canton. Canton takes a hit but made the outlet to his partner DeMello and Flick bounces it to the neutral zone. Even cutting safely out. Belongs to McNarty again. Halmo into the corner. Tied in a knot by DeMello, a change. Nearly too many men, but they did complete it. Palmo protects it on the end boards. Makes the pass, McNarty side of that, Anderson robs Palmo from close range to keep his team alive. And the Majors shoot it out of the zone. Past the nine minute mark of the first overtime period. McNarty a backhander. Two hops to Anderson, and he takes no chances. McNarty with another good chance gets out there on that line with Halmo and Maidens, and McNarty makes a beautiful backhanded no-look pass. Halmo has a glorious opportunity, but J.P. Anderson in good position once again. And Peter, he took a quick look at McNarty before he sent that puck out to the front of the net. J.P. Anderson, a, a layer, uh, excuse me, alert and aware. Back pass, Helis in behind Brendan Children. Helis racing back, pressured by Riley Brace. It was Brace who was in the penalty box when McNarty scored the power play goal that tied it, and he didn't like the call very much. Shemich pressured by Kramarosa. Lost an edge behind the net. Off Camarosa. Odd man rush for the attack. Meadens deals with a rolling puck for Petgrave, who moves up again. And he lost an edge and went into the board. Helis and Brace away from the puck. Sent Helis throw. Oh yeah, you'd like to have that 
camera away from the puck. A lot of nastiness in this affair. Really has been the last three games. Stanis, who drew an assist on the McNardi equalizer. Fleming, good step up at center. Cameron Brace, a backhander off Fleming. Fleming knocks him down. Carrying on is the captain, Garrett Wilson. Ten postseason goals for Wilson. With Hishin and Cameron Brace. Brace has given some excellent energy to those top two forwards of the attack. Well, you gotta love his speed. Once again, it seems like he makes things happen when he's out there. Blacker and Smith Kelly involved. You're right, Sam. It's nasty. And you better keep your composure. Smith Kelly waltzes in. He zips it wide. He led the Ontario Hockey League in the regular season with 11 game winners. Kishin. Canton back on the Colorado first rounder in front to the backhand and Cameron Brace couldn't pull the trigger. Kishin. Wilson shoveled in wide. Wilson in that six foot three frame. Held up by Ken. And Smith Pelly will exit the zone. Flip, look who's lurking in behind. Shug, but it's offside. Man, oh man. Joey Hishin is so magical with those hands. He's able to escape Canton, get it out in front of the net, and Brace, who's had some good chances in this game, simply can't finish it. And you'll see as Brace tries to get it to an area where he can get some leverage on it, it just slides away from him. He had a, a half yawning cage to bang at home, but just couldn't bring his stick back to the puck. If you're wondering why there's a stoppage, just like is the case in the National Hockey League, the rule here is at the 10 minute mark, they want to clean the surface a little bit. We've played a little more than that. 11.48 into this overtime period. The Mississauga St. Michael's Majors and the Owen Sound attack have fired 40 pucks at one another. Goaltending has been sensational, especially here in the overtime frame. It ordered a couple of good stops. J.P. Anderson. Couldn't be more even. Shots on goal, I'll tell you that. And Owen Sound with a power play opportunity in overtime that went awry. Corrente blocked. Gilbert had to be careful as he moved with a puck in his body into the slot area. Shaw in deep on the forecheck. Corrente loses it to Burdnikoff. Shaw checked by Durazio. Good stick by the veteran defender Michael Durazio. A one-time first round priority selection of Owen Sound. Helmo. Michael Helmo off the outside of the net. And the goal judge got a little trigger happy. Yeah, he got deked out too. Helmo really had nowhere to go. Anderson was there, had that side of the net covered. But as he flicked it up, a little anticipation on the part of the goal judge, the red light flickers on. But uh, by no means is this anywhere close to being a goal. You look at the angle Helmo's at, I mean, Anderson just doesn't give him anything. Helmo scored a goal in game three Friday night and was very close to ending this one. The face-off versus Joseph Cramarosa. One by Cramarosa and cleared. Is this icing? Oh, Shemich tried to give it the, uh, the old shifty pants. He was giving it the old chubby checker twist to make it look like he was hustling to get back. And icing is the call regardless here. I mean, what a fantastic hockey game this has been. I mean, we talked to Mark Reeves. He seemed to be a little more loose than he normally is before the game. I think he really felt good about his hockey club going into this game. And the way it's been played so far, he's had every reason to. Coaches have a feeling. Petgrave fans after a clean faceoff win. Looking for a second straight overtime winner. Matt Petgrave. Petgrave at center. Bumped. Cramarosa into the zone. Away from McNarty. Trying to cut the front. The battle's going on away from pucks. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a couple adjectives I would use. 
definitely going to Mr. Clean in this contest. There's no doubt. There's Cramarosa doing his job to get around, including picks his stick out, and there's a little bit of that away from the puck activity. Chemich piling brace to the ground, and the Mississauga bench is up in arms when there was no call made there. Jesse Blacker, Cameron Brace, recently turned 18. Joey Hishon backhands it off the glove of Percy Wilson. Carries on, lost his balance, quick to get to his feet. Smith Kelly can't clear it by Matt Stanich. In the slot area, swept away by Stuart Percy. Hishon battling Fleming. Fleming knocked him down. Stanich keeps it in at the point. And Percy trying to settle it down, literally, and clear the zone. And shug an opportunity to do so for Sizikis. A low hit on Casey Sizikis by Garrett Wilson. Wilson for Hishin at the line. Hishin off a stick and high off the end glass. It's DeMello with a good stick play. Shug chopped it back deep, but awaiting was Brace. Canton and Brace, every battle so hotly contested. Jay Gilbert, a wrister, goes off Rob Fleck and DeMello. Soft little touch to Fleck and out to center for Jordan Mayer. One of the game two heroes with two goals. Helis takes a hit, stays with it. Good battle by Helis. Leads the rush. Funny, you know, these guys play together so often. We've seen two offsides here in this overtime with McNarty, Keelis, and Maidens working together. No excuse for that. They've got to have a simple play, get it into the zone here. Wilson has to cover for Jesse Blacker, and he goes down low bridge on Casey Sizikas. Sizikas and the Mississauga bench looking for a call. And they might have had an argument here, but the way things have gone on in this game, Peter, it's going to be tough now to find a call. That's going to have to be blatantly, blatantly obvious. Damage off his stick in the high glass. Funny Karam out of the corner. And Cramarosa there to send it out. Nearly 15 minutes into the first overtime. Game four of the best of seven. Rogers OHL Championship Series. The Majors lead the set two games to one. Right on Zidor, forced to play it. Riley Brace with Wise and Cramarosa. Wise, a turn upended by Halmo. And under duress, Petgrave held in, though. The puck's got to get out of the zone. He makes a great play behind the net and just can't finish it off, Petgrave. Fanning with Shemich. Shot by Percy, not a lot on it, and it did come outside the line anyway. Oh, boy. You know, when you get this late in the period, and, and here we are in the afternoon, the building a little hotter than it is normally, that ice gets snowy in a hurry. And there's Petgrave. He gets backtracked by Brace, so he can't get it out. And then a little later, how about this attempt by Shemich? He fans on it, and this almost results in a good scoring chance for the Mississauga St. Michael's made. Got to be sure with that puck here late in the frame. Stanish. That's deflected into the seats. Crammed in here at the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Center. And who wouldn't be enjoying this as a hockey fan? Highly, highly entertaining. Just making through the fans there at the intermission break. And they're really enjoying it, as they should. Just a preview of more to come in the MasterCard Memorial Cup right here on Rogers Sportsnet, Friday, May 20. Hishin has lost his stick, kicks it. Shug to the line, Percy a bouncer. Hishin, Brace has a breakaway. Cameron Brace, he scores. Series is even. Just when you think Joey Hishin is out of the play. He loses his stick, he gets it back, a fortuitous bounce has it come right back on his stick. And Brace cheating the zone a little bit. 
has this worked perfectly for him. Mark Reed's in the Owen Sound attack. We're going to the Hershey Center, all tied at two, thanks to Cameron Brace. Second to the postseason for Cameron Brace. Both of them game winners. None bigger than this. Rewarded with some ice time on that top line. His speed really fits the style of Hishin and Wilson. And after a couple of good chances earlier in this game, he's finally able to make it work. And the Owen Sound attack back-to-back -back overtime winners to tie the series. They're 4-0 in the postseason in extra time. It certainly treated them kind. And after trailing this series two games to nothing, we're even at two apiece. Thanks to Cameron Brace and his overtime goal 16 minutes into the extra frame. That's about as entertaining a hockey game as you will see. Time now for our play of the game, and I don't think you have to guess at what's coming. Brought to you by Bauer Hockey. Well, we'll get a look here at the Owen Sound attack. Joey Hishin, after losing his stick, regains control of the puck. Brace leaves the zone and makes good on the breakaway. High blocker side. And after three or four good chances in this game, Peter, he makes good on the one that counts the most. Sportsnet connected with Ivanka Osmak coming your way after the Cameron Brace breakaway winner. Back-to-back -back overtime wins for the Western Conference champions. Have this best of seven Rogers OHL final tied at two. You can catch games number five and now six. This series is coming back, just like the people here had hoped for. On Rogers TV, had a feeling that both these teams would be ready to put on a great show. And that is exactly what they did. Required extra time. Owen Sound is tied the series. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom. Because together is stronger. Tied tight, united we stand. In honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Chandler is a savage with knockout power. Let's go get that title. Charles Oliveira. The longest active win streak in the UFC. This man is super dangerous. I'm back. I'm here to fight. Nate Diaz is one of the biggest superstars in the sport. Leon Edwards is incredible. England's best hope for a UFC champion. Sold out event. Here we come, Houston. The LGBTQ plus community is full of artistry, talents, and inspiring stories. So sit back and enjoy our fun, casual, and intimate chats with artists and creative folks on the longest running LGBTQ plus talk show in local history. And one that has been called a very important show. We love you. Thank you for watching. Chairman, host of Politically Speaking. Join me for my next show when my guest will be the Blue Water District Roman Catholic School Board on Politically Speaking on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Rogers TV and a special presentation of game number four of the 2011 OHL Championship Series, part of the seven game presentation honoring Owen Sand's first ever OHL Championship 10 years ago. I'm Eddie Pava with Mark McKelvey. And Mark, I think even after watching that game again, you could breathe a huge sigh of relief that Owen Sound won that game four and evened up this best of seven series at two games apiece. You're right about that. I think I'm sweating. 
<laughs> uh, here right now after watching that overtime, which was 16 minutes in length was the overtime. That's when Cameron Brace scored at the 16-minute mark on that breakaway. But that 16 minutes might have felt like an eternity to an attack fan back there in 2011. And we talked about who was going to be the hero. Well, it was Cameron Brace on the breakaway. A nice feed up from Joey Hishon. And Brace makes no mistake. A fan favorite, always known for his speed, Manny. And it was on full display to get that opportunity. And he's now got the series tied 2-2. How about the play of Joey Hishin, though? And let's talk about Joey Hishin a little bit here. Um, he had a marvelous playoff series, too, for Owen Sound. But that play to send Brace on a breakaway, Hishin seemed to be doing everything right. If he wasn't putting the puck in the net, he was doing the other things. He set up McNarty for the game time goal late in the third on the power play. And then being able to get a piece of that shot and then setting up Brace on the breakaway, thought that was huge. And he was doing everything for the Owen Sound attack. He certainly was, and there's a reason why he is one of the greatest players in this uh, franchise's history. But in that postseason specifically, I can just recall many moments where uh, his magic was on display. The game just slowed down at times when he had the puck on his stick, considering all the skill he had too. Uh, it's amazing to see just how he could create some space and just knew how to thread the needle as well. And you talked about it there on the game-winning goal. Joey Hishin, though, in that postseason, got the two assists in game number four, two huge points to help the attack get the series tied up. I mean, in that postseason, uh, Joey had just five goals, but 19 assists. And I think that's what uh, you're talking about, Manny, right there, was just how he was really able to drive a lot of the play and to uh, settle up a lot of what ended up being very clutch goals in this playoff run. Working on the PK, taking important face-offs in the offensive zone and the defensive zone. Uh, Joey Hishon, a key member of the Owen Sound attack in the 2011 OHL Championship Final. And after this 2-1 overtime victory in Game 4, it was a brand new series. Owen Sound had some life. Being down 2 nothing after the first two games, Owen Sound fighting back, winning Game 3 in overtime, Game 4 in overtime, heading back to Mississauga for Game 5. If I remember it correctly, Mark, there was a lot of Owen Sound fans who thought, well, geez, here we go. The attack are just rolling, and the train is going to continue on the way to the Hershey Center in Mississauga. I think so. I remember that as well. I think the attack had a lot of confidence. So too did their fans. But from a Mississauga standpoint, let's look at it, Manny. I mean, the facts are right there. And you mentioned it. Two overtime wins for the attack. That's two games that the majors know they were one shot away. And had that gone their way, they would have turned this into a sweep. But this was a hard-fought battle, and it was ramping up, and now it was going to be the best two out of three. But as you're mentioning, we're going back now to Mississauga for game number five, and this is a majors team that I don't think their confidence level had dropped one bit. I think this was a team that, if anything, was probably a little bit angry that they hadn't been able to take care of business to put themselves in a better spot uh, after getting off to that perfect start going up two to nothing. Four games are in the books, but still – Three more games as part of this 2011 OHL Championship Series. Rogers TV will bring you the three remaining games, including that Game 7 thriller. And as part of this special anniversary presentation, Rogers TV will also bring you a special edition of Attack Wrap with members of that championship winning team from the Owen Sound Attack. Hope you enjoy the rest of the series. On behalf of Mark McKelvey and the rest of the Rogers TV crew, thank you for watching this special anniversary edition of the 2011 OHL Championship. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. It's been quite an experience. And when you look back when you were younger and starting out, 
I would have never thought that I'd be going to see the 67s play, and I've been so lucky to be going for so many years. It just doesn't seem possible, but when you look back, it seems like yesterday. We still haven't lost the desire and the excitement to go and watch them. I met Marilyn at Central Pay Office when we were about maybe 17. At the finance department. There was two units there. I was on one side, but she was on the other side. There was a long time we hadn't seen each other. We went to a 67 game and she was up about three rows from me. We ran into each other and made up friends again. And we like going, we like razzing all the players. What are you doing, Trombley? Mahaffa Meyer, he could play better. He usually takes that puck up and goes. Now what did Nine do that for? They waste too much time passing. Two isn't playing the way he can play. They can't hear us, but they, we know what they're doing. <laughs> he should know better. Sometimes I'll have things to go on Friday night with my son and his wife and my granddaughter and I said, on a Friday night? Are you crazy? Change that night. I said, I can't miss my 67s game. Oh, one won't hurt you. I said, nope. <laughs> for 50 years, you've each gotten season tickets to the 67s and for 30 of those years, you've seen them play together. Would you say that you're recognizable faces in the TD Place Arena having supported the team for so many years? It's amazing the people who come and speak to us. It's nice to be recognized that they're going to the games and they know we're there in those seats all the time. So I guess it's just normal to say hello. Since we met Mrs. D, uh, she brings a lot of the boys up. And then sometimes when they're not playing, if they're hurt or that, they sit up behind us. And we've told the boys that shoot the puck, don't be passing it all the time. <laughs> They probably walk away and say, those women, are they ever bossy? <laughs> Brian Kilrath, 67th coach for more than 30 years, came by to say hi to you yesterday. You helped me coach. <laughs> yeah, how many years did you help me, though? Oh, my God. Years oh, and God. years. Yeah, that's where I got all my tips. Yeah. What does that mean to you to be recognizable to someone who's left such a legacy in the 67th organization? I couldn't believe it when he came up and he said, oh, not you girls. And I'm thinking, Brian. <laughs> when Brian was there, it was just unreal how good the team was. He seemed to have a way with the boys. Over 50 years, you've seen a lot of players come in and out of Ottawa. What's it like to see some of those guys now playing at the highest level in the NHL? It's an honor to be able to watch TV now and say, oh, I watched him play as a kid. When you look in the stats of the paper and you hear these players that played for 67s, you watch now when the games are on TV. Right now, I think I counted that I can count about 17 to 20 players still playing. I know over 50 years you have a lot of different special hockey memories on and off the ice, but is there any that stands out for you as being something that you're always going to remember? Oh, yeah. Our last Memorial Cup when we were tied, we told one of the players, shoot that damn puck, and that's all you heard. Shoot it, shoot it, and he's standing there, and we're thinking, if you don't shoot, we're going to lose. And finally, he shot it and it went in, and, and then they all went over and jumped in the canal, and I thought, oh, you crazy kids. I'll never forget one night I was almost crying going to my seat. I had four tickets and I saw this man come in with three children. I gave him the four tickets. I still get emotional when I think of this. The one little boy looked at his dad and he says, now we can have some popcorn, eh, daddy? And that just broke my heart. Des from Almont, he would get a butterscotch pie. And I don't mean just a small pie, I mean a huge pie. And then he brings it down, and I said, Des, you'll never get that in there. I'll put it in. So he brought it in, put it under our seats, and at intermission, we were sitting there, all of us eating a butterscotch pie. What has kept you coming back and so excited and invested in the 67's team? The night out, to see the players playing hockey and see what's going on, it's a good entertainment night. For me, I think it's the, the outing and something to look forward to and the fellowship. Maybe eight, ten of us always sat together. It was down now just to Marilyn and I. It was an evening of entertainment. We'd go out, the gang of us, for meals before the game. Well, good afternoon. What does your friendship mean to the both of you and what does it mean that you get to go to 67's games together? means a lot when you're by yourself and you've got somebody who cares. Just to have our friendship and be able to go out together and then we talk about the game or the players and we enjoy each other's company. I've enjoyed every year of it from the beginning till now and I'm very grateful to have Marilyn as such a good friend who is there for me, as I said, my right hand. 
If I didn't have it, I'd be lost. I don't know what I'd do in the winter months. <laughs> expectations when you wear the flag for Canada. One of them is excellence in your play and your behavior, but the other part is the outreach and giving back to the international community. So I hope they really appreciate what this means on, on an international stage in terms of growth of the game, importance to other countries, and take that with them. We like to do these types of practices with, with different countries. It's, it's good for both programs. There's a lot of you know logistics and a lot of planning that goes into this tournament. So for them to take the time uh, out of their busy schedule and support us and help us and just come out here and have a laugh and throw the ball around with us means the world to these guys. It was a huge surprise <laughs> for the team. He, he came up to me and was like, yeah, I organized the practice for Team Canada. A team full of like, the best players of the world. And I couldn't believe it. And to come out here and have a practice with him was a huge opportunity. It was almost like a pre-teen dance at the beginning where you had all the Canadian guys were here, all the Austrian guys were here. It was kind of nice when they started going down and they're just simply playing catch. That's sort of a simple exchange, but it's, it's kind of cool to watch that sort of happen naturally and, and then, you know, it sort of grew throughout the whole practice. Shoot. So come get wide, take run by the goalie, and just throw it in the They were able to coach us, like, all small details, like, from the goal, how to take shots, where to look at the goalies and everything. And I think it's a huge, huge learning only in one hour. It's, it's tough to put into words on how much this means to Austria lacrosse. These guys that have a, a wealth of knowledge and the experience, our players from Austria are like sponges. They, they, they take all this info in and there's no doubt in my mind they're going to go back to their country and uh, share it with the rest of the lacrosse world over there. These are great memories for the Canadian guys as well. You don't remember the practice where you were fine-tuning the penalty kill or working on your breakouts and stuff. It's the time you came out and got to share a laugh and, and some passes and play catch with some people you've never met before from parts of the world that you've never been to. And it's all about those encounters that, that make this tournament and this game so great. They care about the game and, and they care about the growth of it. And I'm proud of how they embrace this part of what it means to be for Team Canada. Box lacrosse still isn't the most popular sport out there, but hopefully practices like this, they can bring back to Austria and they can teach you know, their fellow players some stuff and continue to grow the game. One thing that uh, stands out in my mind is the practice player of the day. These guys gave away some uh, shoulder pads to a guy on our team that you know, didn't have proper structured shoulder pads. So these guys noticed that. It's not easy for them to get gloves or pads or helmets or whatever it is for lacrosse. I'm very uh, surprised and thank you for the gift. It's great. It was great to make practice with you guys. That simple thing that they showed gratitude towards one of our players and the look on his face that made my day. For me, his expression and how happy he was, was worth it all. I was lucky enough to play for Canada in 03 when this whole international indoor tournament started. And to see the growth in every four years, where the tournament is now from back in 03, you're seeing the fruits of those interactions. The health of the countries and the volume of the countries and, and the overall growth of the program has, has been good to see over the years me being a, a newer coach and uh, newer to the, this uh, world championship but I look forward to kind of seeing that growth within you know Austria lacrosse and these newer clubs and I got to say thank you to you guys and uh, Glenn for uh, giving us this opportunity so thanks Bob. If we can't win this thing we're hoping Austria does now. Yeah we'll see him in the finals. <laughs>
province-wide stay-at-home order is currently in effect. Limit trips outside the home. Remain in your local community and work from home if you are able. Visit the province's website for more information. Now you can enjoy the Amazon Prime Video app on Ignite TV. Just say Amazon Prime Video into your Ignite voice remote and watch Amazon Originals like The Expanse. They wanted to fight. We'll give them one. The Wilds. Are we in the actual Bermuda Triangle? And The Boys. That is amazing. Prime members can stream Amazon Originals, movies, TV shows, and more on Ignite TV today. Now you're in command.